Welcome to my hardcore Minecraft world where I have survived 4,000 days. I love to build and build and a little bit more building on top. With over a year and a half spent in this world and nearly 900 hours survived. Now for part three of my journey to 4,000 days. Here's the first 3,000. Please leave a like and subscribe. And if you don't want to watch this entire thing, just leave it running in the background as it helps me out a ton. Let's get rocking. Starting this hardcore series, I gave myself a big goal to build an interconnected world full of villages towns and cities where i've built a lot of really cool stuff throughout the 2000 days survived inside of this world so far like trees lots of trees did i mention i like trees but until now my house has stood pretty alone on top of this hill i'm taking on the challenge to build the first city inside of this world be sure to double check that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on this new journey and let me know in the comments what you think I should build inside the city. First up to make progress on the city, I want to fix the wheat farm. As it's really close to working, but it's extremely loud and extremely slow. We've got 49 wheat. Let's turn that off. So instead, I want to make a hopper clock. Now, if I put a stack of kelp inside of here, that should activate it. Kelp goes over and it trades back. For this machine, apparently we only need one note from the note block every so often. So I should turn on, go for a little while, and then turn back off. Next, I need to get some bees to add inside of each layer of the farm to help the wheat grow faster. For the purpose of bee breeding, I would like to create a small shack right down here. Let's level it off a touch more with some dirt. Next, for the foundation, something like this should work. Turning it into a tiny greenhouse with some glass walls. Then we can solidify a touch. And something like this should work out pretty well. Putting some campfires on any of the sides so that the bees don't hurt us. A lantern out front. With coarse dirt in for the floor, I want to spend some time connecting this up to the main road. And a tiny path like this should do it. Now, these four beehives all have bees inside of them. These four, on the other hand, are empty. We just need to keep breeding until we can get a ton. And it's kind of cramped in here. It should be fine. I can grab some bone meal and get a ton of flowers. Now, I just need to wait for the bees to jump out. Oh, there they all are. Hi, everybody. Take a flower. No, no, no. You saw nothing absolutely nothing everything is fine i'm just gonna for no reason at all extinguish these campfires i've now got a ton of bees in here the sun is setting so hopefully they'll go into the hive soon this should be enough more beehives we'll take the bottom eight as we know they're full so is my inventory now with it still being nighttime i need to jump into every single one of these adding some alliums to the corners and one of the beehives up here and we're good all of the beehives are now in and I'm a little worried as I got a stack of wheat from it. So I don't think these are working. While breeding the bees, I also realized that this system is much more complex than it needs to be and make it so much, so much less brain numbing with just a redstone line going to each of the note blocks. So it only goes once. Hopefully this thing's working a little bit better now. Oh, that's so much more peaceful sounding. Next up, it's time for everybody's favorite part, planting a field. However, I did just notice the carrot farmer is uh, dead. So I need a new one. But first, the field. Adding another field to this world brings us up to 21 fields of farmland and it's starting to look really good. Now asking you all to subscribe right now would be a little weird, wouldn't it? It's almost like the intro just ended and I did that. No, no, no. It'd be so weird of me. I'm not a sellout, of course. Now look at this carrot field. In addition to this, I want to add a small pumpkin patch right over here as I don't have one anywhere in the world yet. So a little something right back here should be great. This is looking pretty good. We just got to wait for the pumpkins to grow. And because I can't be stopped, I'm going to build a small farmhouse right over here. One final step, waxing all of the copper. And the farmhouse is complete. Look at it. Oh, it's so cute. I'm really happy I took the time to do that. Now back to the last field fix for the day, moving a villager into the care farm. First off, I started by digging out a new tunnel so I didn't need to build one in the air again and laid down a new rail track to get the villagers into the new field as quickly as possible. And if I need any replacements again in the future. But this should be everything we need up here. And a quick trip down to send a villager off. And we've got one villager left. 
Perfect. Off you go, buddy. Our new carrot farmer. Welcome home, buddy. You're gonna do great. There haven't been like six farmers also in here that have died. You'll be fine. Building, let alone planning a massive city in Minecraft takes a lot of brain power, which I can't even say brain power. So today we're focusing on the Northern Gatehouse and the land leading up to it. This needs to be a pretty grand and large entrance into the city. So starting with two massive bases, we can work our way up. I wanna add some towers onto the corners to break up from the current boxy look we have, which we can just send these all the way up. Both towers are in on the side and it's taking shape. Next, I'm thinking the archway itself is gonna be about this tall, and then we bring it forward. Now that is starting to feel like a gatehouse. So from there, I spent some time adding in more of the stone to get the rough outline of our gatehouse in place. So next, I wanna plan the road connecting back down to the ground. This should be a good start and it's got a nice curve to it, but we're going into a city. So I don't think having a coarse dirt road is the right idea. For this, first up, I'm gonna need cobblestone, regular stone, stone brick, then some rooted dirt, which I'm almost out, and regular dirt. And finally, to merge those two sets together, lots of packed mud. Entering the city, I want to start with stone and cobblestone at the top, which then merges down into the packed mud bricks as we work towards rooted dirt and regular dirt in as well. Well, and those work really well leading back into the coarse dirt I use in every other pathway around this world currently. Now the gate itself won't be stone, this is just for the plan. Like I wanna use the top of deep slate down here at the base. Which I am already really, really liking. I wanna get terraforming so this doesn't look like it's floating any longer, but first I should probably extend the walls all the way out to the mountain and to the tree. Sorry, wheat field. I think you gotta go. Adding the trim in front of the wall here as well, and this should work. Next, we need a lot of dirt. And I have one box and some change. On the mountain side, I wanna make it a little bit smoother so we can have space to include a building like a stables or something, but still having a bit of a harsh drop off right in front of the wall. The first side is now done and ready for building. And from here, I wanna make the other side a lot steeper and descending down into the valley. Connecting the ground to the ground is a later foot problem. And man, that guy hates me. Now I wanna focus on building up the gatehouse as well as designing the walls. Taking some inspiration from the mud brick castle for the block palette, I need to gather up a ton more mud. But first, my wings are pretty busted, so I need to make a quick trip into the end and fly my way over to the Enderman farm. Next up, we are off to the swamp, where my goal is to kind of be to gather up two shulker boxes of mud. Two shulkers of mud. In the mess of shulkers, I have a granite and brick shulker box. The last item I need is brown mushroom block, which we can get a bunch here in the forest. And this should do it. I've got plenty of brown mushroom blocks to work with now. I've got a good amount of wheat so we can craft up a ton of packed mud and a bunch of bricks. Getting started on the build, we can include some stairs here, then frame it all in with some trap doors. The recessed line back here, I wanna fill in with a bunch of brick, a few terracotta, and granite. I'm gonna leave a stone here in the center because I've got an idea for something fun to add in. Starting on the gatehouse structure itself, I wanna bring in a bunch of packed mud mud brick as well as brown mushroom block to be the main structure of this building this is looking really good from here i want to tackle the upper battlements where yes i want to use diorite a strip of regular then we finish with polished on top oh i love that that looks really good now next up for the towers i'm gonna need something we don't have so i flew over to the jungle and chopped down a bunch of trees from here i want the corner towers to pop out a bit but still stay within the general color palette which is where the jungle comes in. First one is now done and it pops out really well against the mud. And there, both towers are now finished. Next up for the roof, I'd like to start out with some spruce on the corners and some deep slate tile for the rest. And I think that'll work for number one, with number two being the same roof as well. From here, I want to build out the outer walls to the side a touch so I have a better idea of what this looks like. 
For the top, I want to build in some diorite too. The bricks at the top is working really well over here. Time to bring the second side up. With the walls in on both sides now, I thought we could build out some flags using oxidized copper and prismarine. Topping with some anvils and trap doors, we got some big old fancy flags. From here, since I already know what I want to do with the walls, I'm just going to get them built up. Next up from here, I want to take a bunch of spruce logs, craft spruce planks for a lot of stairs, because it is time to work on this guy I fell all the way down. At the top, I want to use a familiar roof pattern that we've done on our starter base, adding a trim out of spruce wood. Moving on to the roof itself, I'd like to bring in some cobbled deep slate. Next up, I'd like to grab some sandstone, a little sand. This should do it for the walls of the top. Starting by taking off the bottom bit, where I can add in some spruce down here instead, then stripping it all down. With all the stone removed, we can add in a little sandstone, and I think that'll do for some texturing. Next, replacing the floor and the ramparts with just some more packed mud. And we can add a little bit more detail to this face. And there we go. This is looking much better out here now. The front of the gatehouse is looking great, and I am loving the style. The back, however, I can't hide it any longer. Starting out with the top, I want to finish building out the little house up here. Adding in the packed mud base floor, then building out the sandstone structure before adding in an additional simple railing along the back walkway. Since we more have to worry about intruders from the front here, the back of the gatehouse doesn't need to be as intense. And if anything, we somehow lose the gatehouse to the pillagers we don't want them to have full-on arrow slits when they're firing down upon us the bottom of the build still remains thankfully though we've got most of the front here that we can base it off of But with that done, we can come on the inside now and add in some polished granite down here at the base. And I'm thinking we just use some brick, a little granite tossed in, and some terracotta all the way up at the tippity top. There are two blocks I still need to replace on the gatehouse itself before we can call the exterior done. That and that. This is going to require two lodestones. Each of these requires a netherite ingot. Now I've got plenty of sand, and I can use the gas farm for gunpowder to craft TNT. And we're off to the nether. Back into the old netherite mines. I'm gonna spend one hour mining netherite and see how many I can get. One hour later, and we've got ourselves 25 ancient debris. Next, for a quick trip over to the gold farm or rotten flesh farm. But we got all the gold we need. Now, for the first time in way too long, we can use the netherite forge to create netherite scraps, which we can use to create netherite ingots. Next, into the village or trading hall to get some chiseled stone bricks. And we have two lodestones that are going to go right up here. That looks so good with a little bit of a bonus of four netherite ingots. Moving focus back to the wall itself, I want to first and foremost make it much skinnier. Probably only two blocks tall on the top, so we can move that wall back a few. With that done, I added in all of the blocks along the back edge to finish off the build, leaving only the two towers at either side I'd left to build. And I've got all of the stone cleaned up along the edge too. The deep slate trim and everything, however, we'll figure it out when we start working on the town because there is still plenty left to do out on the front. This city is meant to be a big wow statement. Everything about it is gonna be a little over the top, especially when it comes to the entrance. Kudos to the wandering trader for some small drip leaf, but we can finally empty out some of these azalea leaves. Lastly, over to the flower farm for some azure bluets. Adding even further to the shulker monster, where first we actually need a little gate in here. And something decorative like this, I think, is going to work out really well. A little thin, but I think we'll leave it. It'll be okay. Next, we pepper in a little bit of coarse dirt. Otherwise, it looks a little artificial. From here, maybe some mangrove roots. After that, we bring in all of the azalea leaves with some flowering and regulars. Now, dotting in some azure bluets in the middle to give that really big pop of flowery color. Lastly, a little bit of bone meal for some tall grass. The idea is this is so lush that nobody has attacked it in a very long time and nature has kind of taken over. Or it's so fertile from the blood of our enemies. No, it could.
on, NP. We're peace-loving people here. With the first section nailed down, I continued to doing that over on the other side of the wall to bring it up to par. A gatehouse really only serves a purpose if people are trying to walk through the area, which means I need a road to show people actually are traveling through this area. It looks like I am going to need a bridge going over this massive hole, which will get sorted in a minute. Because right now the road is going to disappear around the mountain, over the bridge, and just kind of over there. But I also want to connect to the river village down here so we can curve a road coming down the mountain like this. A beautiful path through the countryside and it's gonna look so good, but I'm running into one small problem. I need to link it to the road here and there's a carrot field in the way. Well, that's not a carrot field anymore. But I think if I shorten up the field along here, this pains me to take away from a field though. I should have just enough space to sneak a path through. Quite literally, just enough. From here, I expanded the roads, adding in slabs and making them all wide enough for carts to travel down. Next, I wanna clean up some of these steeper faces and add in some rocks. That's looking much better here for the first section. Now for this one. The entire upper road is now finished up, which leaves just this location down here. And unfortunately, it overhangs. We'll just add a little ledge. That'll be fine. Just this little retaining wall right back here remains, and I thought it would be nice to add in something other than just stone. We're right next to the village, so being a little bit stronger probably makes sense. Back to the two towers on the walls. I'm going to need a lot more mud brick. Because this is not gonna cut it. Good thing I have a lot of wheat fields so I can gather up some wheat and craft some more packed mud. Well, the next field in the box is ready to go. But now I can craft plenty more packed mud. All right, let's get building. Leaving some gaps in the sides of these towers, I wanna extend out some turrets. And that should do perfect. Second one is now in place as well. Something tells me there's somebody under the road, which I think is my cue to leave, as I need to gather a ton more spruce wood to build the top of these towers. Spruce tree patch is replanted, and we've got plenty of spruce to work with. I jumped into finishing up the top of the towers, inspired by what you'd find in Age of Empires as a simple top, but to not draw away from the gatehouse itself. This is looking fantastic over here, but now it's time to move all the shulker boxes as I want to build a small stables and inn outside the city for travelers. Okay, the shulkers did not move very far, but I've been thinking about this for a while and already built and deleted so many things. First, to not interrupt the sight line of our gatehouse. Originally, I had a big building here, so I tore it down and I'm thinking instead we do a nice carrot field. And then we build the inn all the way back over here. Next to that, we can throw a stables building right back in here for some horses with a few details added in for the stables it is finished up next up we can tackle the inn Change out the front for some jungle, and I like it even more. Then we could do a nice little flower bed to attract the travelers. A lot of colors in here is gonna draw people in. And of course, a big old chimney smoking away. I know I'm working on the inn, but what a little well right out here just looks so good. The answer is yes. The answer is very much yes, especially when you put water inside it. But okay, maybe a second floor and a roof on this is needed. This build is so fun. Going back to the build style, I started this world with 2,000 days later and expanding to a a new region makes me really excited to move forward on this project but there we go the gatehouse the walls and now a stables and inn in the front are finished i still have plenty of work to do out here but i've run out of time for this video otherwise if i keep working on this video my wedding that hopefully happened a few days ago should have went through or it's really awkward right now hopefully there's a happy post on twitter right yay for working ahead building anything in minecraft requires a lot of blocks normally we make our way underground minecarting slowly breaking blocks and my home's a mess this is fine and all but i'm on a quest to build a city in this hardcore world and i want to tell a story beyond the minecrafty levels of resource gathering today i'm building my stone storage facility to house all of the different types of stone blocks in this game inside of a massive quarry to tell the story 
of how stones were acquired to build this city. Now leave a like and subscribe as less than 40% of you watching my videos are actually subscribed. So be sure to double check as YouTube might have actually unsubscribed you. I already have this massive hole in the landscape and it would be rather dumb of me not to use it for the quarry but I do want to open it up a little bit more before building. And as always, it's time to set up the beacon. Oh, spruce trees and bamboo. You have served me so well since episode one. And that's a lot of spruce wood. Before the digging starts, I definitely need to repair my shovel. So back into the end we go. The upper section now just has stone left removed to open up the area. And this should be pretty quick. Come on, it's so close. Let me break the block. This is a pretty good sized spot, but I think I want to go bigger. Like clearing out this entire section of the cavern. Quarry, cave, hole in the ground thing. Yeah, let's go with big hole in the ground. Things are looking really good so far, but I don't really want these overhangs. So I want to try cutting this back even further. I'm already in full destruction mode, so I might as well keep going. Spending another few hours digging out the pit and revealing a massive area to start building inside. Whoa, wait, look at that. Oh, it's a dungeon. Zombie spawner. How have I not found this before? I can see my house from here but free name tags don't worry i didn't forget as with every hardcore episode i plant a new field inside of this world and as we're building a massive city we need food to feed the people so it actually makes sense to do this now just like you subscribing makes sense if you like the video so double check that you're subscribed and there we have a brand new potato field i want to add so many more trees around here but that'll have to be for a stream later on as i need to focus on the quarry for now the first problem i have is how do i walk down into the hole for this i'd like to bring a new road from the starter mine down along the edge And this brings us all the way down here to the base of the pit, where I've got a lot of terraforming to do still, but it's at least a start. Next, taking some of the stone I already mined out, I wanna create some large geometric shapes as if the workers mined out huge chunks out of the ground. The test area is looking very good. Now to connect the rest of the road to the ground, which is now done as well, but things are looking a little flat texture-wise. So I wanna try adding in a bit of tough just to bring in a few shadows throughout. With a rock solid plan in mind, it's time to finish plotting out this quarry. But just like ogres, quarries have layers and we need to build that into the plan. For this, I wanna bring a road roughly along here that is smooth enough for heavy carts to travel. Creating a bit of a terrace out of stones along this way and the road can continue up here, up that way and off there with another bit of a terrace section back in here. I got to work flattening out the first layer to make it easier to add some details in working in the roadway first. Next up, I wanna take the stones idea that we used to over here and bring that in along this entire edge as well with that section done i can keep clearing away blocks on the next onion i mean layer this should do for here now i need to figure out how to get the road going up to this next point without it sticking out too much maybe for this one i bend it around this way instead of a straight line that should work i just need to clean it up a lot more i finish up this little side over here and the retaining wall but we'll decorate it out further later as i have a lot more blocks to break hopefully for the last time today i cleared out more of the stone in the hole to set the stage for future builds to be added in then moving forward with adding in a lot of the quarried stones to set the layers apart okay it's finally time i've really got to get this beacon out of here it's serving as a great storage room but it is so in the way with that done we'll leave the shulkers floating for now but i want to get all of the roadways in And there we go, the floor is now all dirty. Moving into the first physical build today, I started crafting up a ton of materials, gathering up a load of aged copper and tons of spruce. 
as I want to add in a big lift for the heavier carts to get out of the quarry where the horses might not be able to pull them up the steeper pathway. Starting with a massive wooden structure to house the lift, I want to reinforce the sides and connect them all together, then using some large copper wheels at the top to give it a mechanical aspect for the build. Creating a second structure to hold a counterweight in here to raise the lower levels of this lift over 9,000. I've already added in the lift platform itself for the carts to go up, and originally I was thinking about using grindstones for the chains but they're a little too big so instead i want to use actual chains and a nice barrel with a lamp the shape of this right now is uh boring to put it lightly so i want to add in some ladders stretching around as different support areas and ways to access some upper levels of the quarry this way we can start to break up the boxy rectangular shape we have so far and add a little bit more interest with some new colors. It's still all brown, but it's uh, a start. But with this one, we are connected all the way up to the top. Well, mostly. You can squeeze through there. This will have to do for the second side as I don't quite know what I want to do with the face yet. But I do know that I need some light sources down here as it's getting rather spooky. This should make it a little bit safer down here. But I've gathered so many shulker boxes of stone out of this quarry that I think it's about time to build a place to uh, store them all. The quarry is currently very gray with all of the stone. So I'd like to give this storage room a pop with some color. First, I'm gonna need a lot of pumpkins. Next up, some orange wool. I'm gonna need a load of orange dye as well to craft orange concrete powder, where about half of this needs to turn into concrete. Then of course, like every other building, back over to the lumber mill to get a bunch more wood and craft a ton of spruce trap doors. The last item on the list before we can get building, we need light gray terracotta to cook into light gray glazed terracotta. All of the materials I need are inside of these shulker boxes, and I want to start by outlining the base of this structure. To give ourselves more space, I want to push this back up against the wall, but I think we need to clear out a little bit more space in here for the build itself. Next up, to give an indoor-outdoor feel to really bring in the warehouse vibes. I want to assemble these large archways going all the way across and then building on top of it. Next with these two little holes we've dug out, I want to make them look like small doorways. Where we can add some dark oak in the back and a door to nothing. With the base room done, I got to work building out a chimney and etching out the mountainside to make space for the roof of the storage room. From here, I built up the front doorway, adding on the trim for the roof and placing in a fake window. Then some color, adding in glazed terracotta with some copper to contrast all of the warm wood tones before finishing off the final roof outlines. The final major element for this build is adding in the roof itself. For this, I wanna use a gradient. Starting from some darker oranges, working our way up into the lighter colors where we end up with a little something like this and that is gonna pop really well against the quarry the rest of the roof is now in place and i've been working on some of the final details like another little lift because i apparently can't get enough so we can take a chain all the way up to here chisel deep slide inside and bring it all the way out to connect them and some strip dark oak with another grindstone right there adding in this little lift makes me want to add a bunch more of them throughout the entire quarry to really make this look like a work zone but first we've got to tackle the inside because right now it's not much of a storage room to make a storage room to last the entire hardcore series I need a lot of space as I have too much stone but to avoid a stupidly large building I need to go underground with this one we've got six different rooms for different stone types and overflow chests in the center and plenty of space for a shulker monster in the middle wait what no 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 before we add in any of the chests i want to add some hidden lighting throughout the back with frog lights then mud bricks and packed mud around Next, so that I can still open the chest, but it looks like they have a ceiling above them, we add in slabs. 
with that done next up i just need to start adding in all of the chests which is gonna be a lot and this was already two stacks of chests oh i'm gonna need a lot of wood we empty the wood storage room to create the stone storage room and back to placing in the rest of the chests With all of the chests in place, we can move forward with detailing a touch here, where each one of these cubbies of sorts is going to be decorated on the floor corresponding to the stone types that'll be in there. First, we have stone and stone brick. Next to the cobblestone, we'll have deep slate, which will all be bleeding out into the central area that did know what i'm doing with quite yet next we have bricks and granite diorite and andesite lastly a section for tough and dripstone now as we need it if any of these fill up i have an overflow chamber back here that needs some chests inside but first we can decorate everything else i've lowered the center down to see over the eventual shulker monster and decorated out the floor with a bunch of dirt from here we can start to make this not look like such a box and i want to come through and detail out the sides the same way we did inside each of the stalls it's almost time to move the items in and clear out a lot of this shulker monster but first i want to finish decorating for this i'm gonna need 18 looms 60 note blocks and a few oxidized copper slabs the outside currently looks really good but the inside is a little lacking starting with a trim of stripped dark oak logs around the top and one right across the middle from here we can actually remove a little bit of the mud that we added in and replace that with our note blocks before we finish the center i thought the looms could go in here as the ceiling adding in the ceiling i created two different sections to make sure the room feels like it was grand and needed a lot of extra support to it and because i have way too much of this stuff let's grab some obsidian and make ourselves some ender chests i'm gonna need a whole storage room just for obsidian soon but these can go in the corners so like every good minecrafter i'll bring my own in and set it down in here i've got some chests to finish off this last section in here too which will all be for overflow goodies so i don't even know what i'm gonna put back here yet but now it is finally time to move items into the storage room because in mining out this quarry i already have eight more shulker boxes full of stone and the goal is to get shulker boxes back out of this so i need to empty them into the chest i spent over two hours sorting my storage transforming the shulker mess from this to this and i'm much happier and definitely on team we need an inventory update yes i know there are still some shulkers out here but 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 but, but, but. feast your eyes upon this empty shulkers everywhere i almost cleared 54 shulker boxes worth of junk so much stone cobblestone and it feels very very nice to finally have an actual storage room for stone types but i've been thinking i want to bring a bunch of wagons and carts in here and i keep talking about mules being able to pull carts out of it and everything like that so i think we need a small stables attached to this guy and today we're actually going to move some animals around but if we go right back over here here i think we can use this flatter spot and almost into the wall as a good stables getting right into it i'm building three stalls for animals to hang out in the quarry as workhorses or mules in this case and they deserve a good home because they're the only ones really doing any work around here i need to bring three mules down into the quarry and maybe one or two over to the city gates as well so if we come inside here we've already got one but we need a lot more than that and while these little dudes grow up but look how cute he is first i want to repair my pickaxe because yes it is scaring me at this point too next i'd like to test something if i grab light gray wool i really like the shadow i added in with the tough block but what about a highlight with a bit of a lighter stone so i went forward with adding that throughout the entire first section mule number two yes now oh, they're so adorable come with me little ones first two mules are being delivered and i wanted to bring them over while they were babies because that's the way that i think i can fit them inside of here and he can definitely get out while he's a baby okay that stays there for now we now have a third mule down in the quarry and the first two are gr what i'm missing a mule did he suffocate in the wall okay i need another one until number three grows up he can hang out over here one final step for this corner of the quarry i need to detail the stones above the stables as its default terrain <laughs> 
Looking back at where I started today, peeling back the first layers of the ogre. I mean, the quarry. The quarry is starting to take shape as the first buildings are added in and the first corner is finished up. However, the rest of the walls of the pit are pretty gross. I must blockify them. And then we have fun with the details. But first, our mule has grown and hopefully he doesn't suffocate in here this time. Oh, look at him. I love it. Now, thankfully, we've already decided on the style for the rocks. So I just need to build them. First step for this is going to be grabbing a bunch of stone. And I think we can start over on this section. The upper area is starting to look really good over here, but I've decided I want to take this guy and just send it all the way up stacking on top of each other. And that'll take us all the way up to the top edge. Now, if I keep building around this, which a bunch more of these rocks, it should come together pretty well. I spent an hour terraforming. Yeah, I think this would be considered terraforming the quarry to create the larger rocks, as well as shaping out the remaining corners. And things are really starting to come together and be a full piece of a build here. Pillagers in the quarry. I just, I can't seem to get rid of these, but yeah, they're pointing out I missed a block. Okay, we're going to leave them absolutely ignoring they were ever there because again for another session i need a lot of tough and a quick trip to the sheep farm or more of the wool because as great as this looks right now for the shape it's really hard to see any detail as it's all the one block i need to spend a little bit of time adding in the highlights and the shadows quarry rocks are now done and dusty and this wandering trader is really trying to dispose of one of his llamas next i want to finish replacing the walkable areas with some dirt for contrast filling up on a bunch more stone we can make a bunch of pressure plates and buttons to add almost small stones as clutter throughout the quarry Right now, we have a really big hole in the ground with a few buildings. But to tell a story, we need to show life happening inside of here. If you want to take your builds from that, oh, that's pretty cool, to that wow standpoint, this is the most important aspect. I spent a while thinking about what I can include in the quarry to really bring life in here, and I kept coming back to cranes. Really trying to make this feel and look like a workstation where a lot of people are around doing a bunch of different things. Going with a really simple design for this one, we just want an arm stretch out over here oak trap doors along the top and the old grindstones with chains it looks a little bit lopsided though so out of the back we can do something really simple for a tiny bit of a counterweight or something and then uh, magic happens and things do and here we have the first crane of the quarry this is a big operation though so i need quite a few different cranes throughout the quarry but if they're all the same size it'd be rather boring so i've incorporated a few different designs to get some variety in here the other ones we built are great but i had this large opening over here so i wanted to add in a huge crane to load the heavy stones onto the transport wagons speaking of which wagons and carts are the next step to bringing life into this area i'm gonna need a lot of different types of wood to be able to make some interesting designs as always too many spruce trap doors i'd like to just scatter a few designs to these around the quarry to make it look like things are happening Here we have the first cart already loaded and ready to be pulled on out of here. Medium sized cart is ready to be loaded. He's just a little guy. Look at him. He's just a baby. Next to the great lift of getting the heck out of here, we've got two little guys lined up, ready and waiting. Next, crafting up a ton of barrels. I've set out a few locations to add in some like mining supplies of sorts, showing that we really have a lot of infrastructure and things happening around here. But I don't want it to look cluttered, so I'm kind of containing it to a few different areas. Like this one here, I want to have a covered workstation for the quarrymen to get out of the hot sun. So here we can take some smooth sandstone and make it almost as if like there's a tarp coming all the way across some nice shelving bits and i think that'll do it everything in here is looking really good at this point but one small problem there are mobs spawning everywhere at nighttime a few lanterns hidden around though should fix it hopefully but when in doubt glow like an out last step we need to fly in here and grab a little bit of moss carpet one to save the darker areas from spawning mobs but two we need some green The quarry is now fully built up. 
with a storage room built into the upper levels and so much more detail to go around the entire space but i'm running into a lore problem in order to get the stones from the quarry back into the city currently a wagon would have to go all the way down to the river town back up the hill over to the main gate or i get some gunpowder and make a bunch of tnt like this bare spot on the wall right here is perfect if i take some tnt just dot it along here now i just dig down and put a bunch of tnt in oh damn it oh oh get me out of there well let's see how the first two work oh no 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 bad spot bad spot oh i blew up my rocks but at least we know it's gonna work rocks are temporary pathway is forever one more time here and this should do it yes look at it oh we have a path next up with all of the resources that i got from the destruction i can use it all as a way to plot out the pathway and see how natural of a slope we can get from here towards there i then exploded a bit more of the rock away then brought in a load of dirt back and worked a gradient going from dirt all the way up to stone bricks using packed mud in between then cleaning up the walls of the new path to make it appear like it's in the quarry those walls are all now textured up as well but currently it's a wide open pathway into the definite city the big city back here so we need a little gate and gatehouse to block it off however even with all these rocks i am out of deep slight again time to go mining I might as well try for a few more diamonds down here while we're at it 14 more diamonds and a load more cobbled deep slate but it's time to use a bunch of this stuff to create a lot of deep slate before i can get building i need a lot more jungle wood somehow i'm always out of this stuff okay emergency side mission emergency side mission burb there's a second burb back there i haven't added any burbs to the burb third burb three burbs for the burb tree first burb love me yes second burb third burb no that's my burb third burb you three sit here let me get one more tree down that should be plenty of jungle wood come on burbies let's go home oh no they're knocking all the other burbs off sit back down i hate this bird i have so much regret bringing this bird home from there i went back to crafting all the wooden materials i need for the new build before running down into the dwarven village to trade for a bunch of lanterns everything else i had ready to go here inside of the stone storage room so this should be everything for this i want to keep the same idea from the first gatehouse so they look like they belong together so we have our first gate entrance right here and a second one behind it right there inside of it i don't want to leave the stone in here so i'm going to replace it all with jungle planks and some strip logs inside for the gate itself we can bring in a few spruce slabs extend all of the chiseled bricks across and for this gate we can just use some acacia trap doors so i can at least still kind of fly through it yeah finishing up the front of the gatehouse this is heavily inspired by the eerie in game of thrones with the quarry being a bit deeper but coming around to the back i want to take some walls and levers here to give it a little bit more of a pop and from here i could pretty much just copy everything from the front for this section to the back with a little bit of an overhang. We're just gonna ignore the inside of this mess for now. But look at it, we've got a gatehouse. With the gatehouse finished, the city quarry is now completed. And I have so many stone supplies inside of the new storage room to build up our city. And finally, you can stop yelling at me about the shulker mess that was in front of my house it's still here but much smaller my goal from day one has been to build a massive interconnected fantasy world full of cities kingdoms castles and so much more i've done a lot of really cool things in this world already but today i am starting the most insane project of this world yes yes i know i've said that one before but this one is so crazy i can't possibly finish it in one episode today i am transforming this village village into a city i know i said i was going to transform this village today but what if instead we just build on top of it as in placing blocks and covering it in absolute complete darkness okay i can at least put some torches underneath to keep it safe down here that should do it 
there we go as good as day we have the main street in right here but for the side streets i want to break away from the gray stones so before we can complete those i need to gather a lot of materials first up is wheat which means it's time to plant another field in every episode i plant a new field inside of my hardcore minecraft world trying to see just how many i can plant before the inevitable demise be sure to subscribe so you can see just how much of this world i can cover in farmland before it's too late only nine and a half stacks of wheat less than half of what i hoped for but we have a snazzy new wheat field ah, ah. Yeah. Before I can jump into building the roads, I need a lot of rooted dirt. So I flew around the world looking for azalea trees to dig down and gather all of the rooted dirt below leading into the lush caves, which meant traveling over 5,000 blocks away from home just to find some hidden in a taiga village. Did I just raid an entire taiga village of all of its spruce trapdoors? Yes yes i did at this point i've got a rough idea what i want the side roads to look like around the city with all this newly crafted packed mud and a bunch of different types of dirt blocks i want to start with this little strip here and just kind of see what happens okay i like this especially with the coarse dirt on the outsides next up i want to go up a block the only slab i currently have is these mud brick slabs so i think some jungle could also work in here and up another block so we don't run into that issue too often from here i decided to spend a while tracing out the roads and how they would play between the buildings i created a rough outline by taking a screenshot from above and drawing on it in paint which helped me a lot with adding in all of these roads today my plan is to focus on a small section of the city only looking at these planners right here back to the front gate which i think is about uh 10 buildings i still got some roads to build on the mountainside well uh this this mountainside yay for no flat terrain loading roads check with the roads completed i spent about 20 hours planning out the build in creative mode to get a better idea of how to do this and man, I'm wishing I was a creative YouTuber right about now. As hardcore survival adds a huge level of difficulty as I need to gather all of the materials by hand. And I am addicted to spruce trapdoors. Well, any trapdoor. So I spent a few hours gathering up spruce logs from a mega taiga, clearing out an entire birch forest, and lastly opening up the canopy of the dark oak forest. All to restock the lumber storage room. Man, I still need even more blocks to build this city. First up here, flying off to the mesa and finding a notch up along the way. Nice. I did get lost, but I found a new village and it has hay bales, which means more packed mud. Finally made it to the mesa where I want to get a load of terracotta to build with. And here we have two full sugar boxes. Quickly stopping in the end to repair up my elytra and pickaxe. I think it's time to figure out the first building in the city. Right inside of the gates, I think it's very important to have a storage building of sorts. So let's get started here. Stacking up some tough blocks here to create a stronger base. I want to leave a few large entrances to get into the first floor. Something more like this. From there, I'd like to build some big doors to hide the lack of interior and villagers in boxes. Before I can finish off the base, I need to grab some stone brick stairs and stone bricks. To add as a divider across the top here, Next, as a little detail around the back, I want to take some spruce fences and just add it as a small buffer. Before tackling the next floor, I thought a huge chimney in the center would look fantastic in a wall to kind of hold everything together on the building. From there, I added a staircase to the gate side of the building, and we have some new flooring on top as well. Before some zombies spawn in here and kill our villagers, let's add some torches. Well, lanterns. I've also built a little market stall out here selling blueberries and potatoes. Yeah. And a small shed back here just for some supplies of whoever's working in the back alley. Bless a little well. But now we must go up. But of course, starting with the safety railing. Using some sand and sandstone, I started one half of the second level and using some birch to top it off for a small third story attic, then adding in a ceiling texture out of spruce for the inner side. As next, the larger front section and using jungle wood and some white terracotta to finish off the other half. Walking through the front gate now, I am really loving this, especially Actually, the beautiful mess of sugar boxes over here but we have two different roof sections i'd like the smaller one to be made out of cut copper out which i have plenty here and i've got a crazy stupid idea for the larger one but 
first, let's tackle the simple one. Just filling in the blanks on this roof here with some wax cut copper. This is starting to look really good, but now for the stupid idea. It could also turn out really cool. What if I use raw copper blocks as a building material, as well as some blocks of raw iron? where we can make a tiny gradient going from the copper to wax exposed copper to raw iron. I think that could be really cool. The first building inside the city walls is now completed. The carriage or cart parking facilities and villager house. Here's your pro flip builder tip of the day for the low, low price of listening to me asking you to subscribe. Tell a story with your buildings. I just built a spot to store carts, which means we need a stables back here to house the animals that pulled the carts and a tavern over here to house the people traveling into the city on the carts. So please subscribe. Tackling the stables first, I want to flat end this area to start out with a good dirt floor, where I think ground level is going to be a about right here. I think the middle is going to be made out of a lot of rooted dirt. This should work for the back section, thinking that this will be a wall maybe. And then out here, I want a little outdoorsy stable section. And from here, I think I want some bricks to build up the structure. Running into the Dwarven Cave, I traded with the Masons for tons of bricks and dripstone blocks before getting right into the build. Where I think it'll be bricks over here, then hidden against the back, we just use some dripstone. Small doorway right here out into some horse stables. And then above the dripstone, we just bring in more of the brick. With that started, I added in a corral space along the back and spent another good while finishing off the general shape for the stables. Apparently I've left some aged copper over here so we can ax it down and use this for the roof. One last quick step as I ran out of jungle logs again. Taking all the blocks I just gathered, we can start working on a little bit of a hanging out bit right over here with some jungle. And then here we can strip it all down. Then as some shutters, we can just put in a few ladders and cap ourselves off with a little overhanging spruce stair roof. Okay, pause everything before the roof. I've got a fun idea right here. Flying into the sheep farm, I can grab myself some cyan and light blue wool. Everything over here is so warm toned that what if we introduce a few cool colors with some banners hanging here to kind of block the sight line through the road. Ooh, I like that. And maybe a little hay bale hanging out there going up to the hayloft. But with that, I got the roof in and decided to add in an extra market stall along this back alley just to decorate things even further. Down the side street, I cleared out the coarse dirt in here and hit a water source behind that dirt. Put in the dirt back down, we can turn this into a little bit of farmland and plant some carrots for a tiny city garden. Just a little something like this should look really cool once it grows up. I can't stop, I can't stop detailing, help. I'm just placing blocks, I can't help it. Look at it, wheelbarrow. Okay, okay, we're done. This street the street's done look at it it's beautiful to the tavern okay maybe just a tiny little bit more detailing just a few glow berries and some lichen okay maybe just one more little shrine it's just just a little guy detail brain satisfied i jumped into working on the tavern trading with the villagers for some glass then breaking down some coal ore because i've run out of fuel to smelt some stone into smooth stone and some more smooth sandstone well those are cooking down i want to add some height into the city with a tower sticking out of the corner of the tavern drawing travelers to the entrance. Continuing on with our little story here, I want the tavern to be very approachable. The large windows here at the front showing our non-existent interior should work out really well. From here, I added a sticky outy bit onto the front with tons of windows, kind of mimicking the lower level floor and added to some bushes and its own little roof made out of spruce. Then jumping around to the back, adding in some sand and sandstone for the walls with a few windows and shutters before moving to the top and adding in a really simple spruce stair roof for the back. From here, I want to have some fun with a little bit of color. So I have some cyan terracotta we can bring in for a wall here and some light blue terracotta over on this side. Before we get up to the roof, let's make a big old chimney here out of some deep slate bricks. Use soul fire campfires and trap doors. 
with the little topper and we're all set adding on the roof to the tavern means we now have three fully completed exterior buildings with this bright acacia roof going in taking a moment to look at where we started today now 2300 days into this world and i am very happy with the result of the city project so far but a lot of work is still left before i can remove the shulker monster so let's knock one of those off the list here real quick by building a more open concept building that i want to use as a grocery store when i eventually maybe probably never but there's about a two percent chance of it happening build the interiors of these buildings let me know in the comments if you think it's worth doing that one half of main street is ready to go so far food and housing for the general population is sorted for this part of the city but people would look pretty silly running around here all nicky nothing against it if you want to go for a naked mouth do it but to finish off main street over here i'd like to build a tailored shop Yep, we're off to a great start. But I have run out of mangrove wood, so it's off to the swamp for me. This just happened to overlap with Minecraft Live, so I spent a while streaming and chatting about the new 1.20 update, which honestly, I'm really excited for, especially the hanging signs. And we've got plenty of mangrove to work with, but what about you? What are you hoping to see in Minecraft 1.20? Before starting on the next build, I do want to take some time to lay out a little bit of copper to let it age down. Okay, we are very much in the ugly stage of this build, but that's it's fine it's a work in progress now for some working and progressing i think i want to use some terracotta little white terracotta granite and diorite maybe we start off here instead with a little bit of a base with dripstone as a lower foundation and we work diorite with these buttons on every other going all the way up get some windows in there but something like that is pretty cool for the texture here we now also have a fancy front door where i'm thinking the entire inside space is going to be dark oak planks to the floor and back to the door where we don't need that sign anymore but instead i started with some mangrove here maybe we bring some of these guys around and finish framing it with some cobble deep slate and then we kind of create an arch at the top and brick walls you know what i actually really like that and we can duplicate it and hide the mangrove all the way around the back with the front done i finished off the other walls introducing some jungle planks into the build palette for fun that's legitimately the only reason i just thought it was cool no lore here just a good block buildings without roofs look a little bit awkward so let's get to work on this first i'm adding in a ceiling out of oak stairs and planks All of our copper has aged down nicely so we can gather it all up and slap it on top just like that now all of the main street buildings inside of the city gate are finished things are really looking grand throughout here but there's still so much more i can do it's time to move our way up the side of the mountain where having ordinary houses doesn't seem like a great fit for the city as it'd be very expensive to own two buildings so instead i want every building to have its own purpose like this one right here i want to be an explorer's guild then over here a new business we can have a library of sorts but i'll be honest i've run out of creative and interesting things to say while building because i've been doing a lot of building so let's build spending another four hours in game building my little heart out this upper section of the city is really starting to come together with the addition of the explorer's guild which i'm actually kind of excited to design something for an interior for it sometime in the future i think it could be fun because it's a bit larger then moving on to the library i had a really fun idea for this one to reach peak book reading vibes i wanted to build a small greenhouse at the top fill it with a bunch of plants so people can grab a book and curl up in there on the couch while getting some sun this build also has a little bit of a light slash dark contrast just to have some fun in here so we have the white blocks on one and a much darker tone build on the other hey look interesting content right up here i know the explorers guild and our library are now in place but the street in front well it's uh it's a little bland kind of started decorating over here but i figured this was something very interesting and fun to talk about sorry i'm definitely not going insane <laughs> yeah let's decorate first up i'd like to fill the void right over here with a sort of market stall where we can use some dark prismarine and swap in some regular prismarine bricks in between and carry this down for this one i'm thinking we go the route of being a flower stand start off with a little bit of a framework like this and then we throw some flower pots on and this person sells tulips and something like that should do it a few more crates around we got our flower stand and i realize we're selling tulips in here do i need to build another field no no 
no, no, next episode. For now, we can scratch the field itch by planting another little garden in here. We hide some water sources in the walls and hoe it all down. Might look a little weird when this thing's fully grown up. Ow. But I'm thinking wheat back here could be really cool. Lastly, we do need a small tool shed for this spot where a little guy like this should work yeah i like that but maybe also we have a little archway leading into it add a little wagon out front and it is ready and of course i gotta spend all of my wood here making a few more chests next because the staircase doesn't really go anywhere for now into the side of the mountain i added these banners up here so it kind of blocks it at least just kidding the tower does but if you happen to be in this why mr button if you happen to be in this one spot right here it kind of maybe blocks it yeah worth it at the current end of Main Street, I want to open up into a grand plaza. So I built these garden beds originally here to add some trees and flowers. I would like to take a play out of Scar's book here and grab some coral fans. Getting started over here to do this, you got to clear all the way around the edge and come back in with a little bit of extra dirt below. Once that's done, you just come back on top and fill in everywhere you want to put a coral fan with a little bit of water and then top slabs right in here. From there, the coral won't die because it's touching water. Next up, I'm thinking some big old azalea cypressy type tree things are in order. Trees are in place, and in the center, I decided to add in a few of the alliums to just get some more color. And once it's not the village church, it's gonna look so much better here. But before we get to that, we've got four more buildings to make over here. I'm thinking big old bakery back here. We're gonna have a pottery of sorts over here. In the center, I'm thinking since we got two levels, we could do a big carpenter's workshop at the bottom and maybe something else on the top if you have any ideas. And over here, a big old toolsmith of sorts. Now this episode has been extremely buildy, like 99.99% building. Do you enjoy this video format? Let me know in the comments. Getting right into the next building where I found something new to talk about, sight lines. So to start off this build, I'm building a large bell tower out of packed mud and brown mushroom blocks, giving a point of reference to help people walking around to know where they are in the city. But down here in the villager cave for just a moment, as I really hope these guys trade bells. Yes, perfect. And we can place this bell right over here. Now I want to walk up these stairs and be able to clearly see the bell in the tower at the end of the street. Focusing on that for now, let's get some walls in place so we can see what the alleyway will look like. Okay, the first tourists are here in the city and it's not open yet. But there we have the first building. I'm thinking we bring a little bit of a jet out there. Maybe the bottom will come out too for a big doorway. And this is meant to be the bakery. So I wanted a big window to see inside. Now for this section here, I'm gonna need some deep slate and some acacia. I'm thinking an overpass connecting the tower and the building together will be a great way to restrict the sight line, but still make the player want to explore even further. Starting right here, and then we can come up to the top, use some spruce, and take it all the way across. And the perfect spot for a covered walkway on top. Building late into the night, but there we go. No, 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 it's not mob proof. Ah! Overpass in place, I went back to building out the different structures along this upper section, trying to add in the walls first before too much of the detail so I can get a good idea of what I'll be able to see when I'm walking down the pathway. Working on all of the buildings at the same time, jumping between them, and the vision is really starting to come together. Over here at our toolsmith, I want to add in a big old chimney back here for the future forge underneath. Now for the roof itself, I'm thinking an ode back to our original starter house. We'll use some cobble deep slide. There we have it. One more big boy finished up inside the city. For this big old window into the bakery, I would love to make it pop here with this yellow glass and a little bit of an awning using oak trap doors. Then I'm thinking a little bit of outdoor seating right in here. Maybe a few little plants back in the corner. And I've also got this little green patch down here, which could look nice with a few more flowers. Now, if we actually had some buildings, people might want to hang out here. So we can start off on the top of the potter's workshop with a little bit of a balcony sticking all the way out here maybe then here we can bring up even further with some more of our sand and sandstone mix i added mangrove planks for the roof of the bakery so over here i think we're gonna use some acacia 
little pop here on the front with some crimson and we've got the upper entrance finished now over here i'm thinking we bring in some dark oak strip it all the way down and in the back we throw in a nice door border it off with even more spruce because i can't be stopped and then up here we do another one of those little sticky outy bits introducing some of our oak we can do little flower pots out here on the front again and some oak trap doors which i can use to get myself up mangrove stairs to fill in the blank and there we go but maybe right here as a sign going into the bakery we could just put some prismarine kind of blocks everything behind it but i also like that because it contrasts so much it makes me want to walk over there looking out into no man's land we've also got this side finished but there's one more thing i need to finish off the bakery gotta get that cake 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 all of our buildings are finished up here and now i've got to figure out what i want to do with this final spot i've been building for six hours straight so i need a moment here before i jump back into yet another build so i ran around the city placing in some glow lichen and glow berries on the buildings to help add in some more greenery and while walking around i realized i forgot to detail this area outside of the big old ivy so i think we start with a well right over here with that we can put a little seating right over here really guys really come on please no not now not now okay just take out your banner boy thank you stupid pillagers from here i thought it'd be really cool to bring some like hanging plants across the top and we can sleep on the bench for now but now we had chains a few flowers in here and then some ferns which i can find right over here in the taiga toss these guys in and perfect next i got a little water and we can do this and of course the tavern needs its own little garden where they're growing beetroot magic spore blossom above and a little hedge around it from here i think it would look a lot better to border our, our central path with some moss you were decorative flowers added in and big boys back there and i think that is perfect with the garden done it's time to tackle the last house in this first section of the city remember the goal of this project is to create a city that connects all the way down beyond the river at the bottom of the mountain but one house at a time i want to start with some mangrove logs some dripstone block and maybe a little polished granite with two different street levels to work with here i want to use the bottom as a workshop with a bunch of dripstone walls going around the edge now for the lower entrance down here it needs to be big maybe not that big maybe more like this big and something like this for a door behind and that should do it first floor isn't going to be super detailed but this wall's very boring over here i've been wanting to introduce some funky blocks into the build so far just to keep it fresh and interesting so this time what if we did some soul soil yeah i like it workshop level is ready to go so i hopped my way up top and used some stripped mangrove logs for the wall then added in a little extra of that soul soil to the top section adding in the front door for the second level now and all that remains is the roof which i need even more copper i believe i still have a decent decent amount final roof is now going on completing every single building within this first section of the city coming back to what i was talking about with sight lines earlier when you walk along this path you get the glimpse of the tower up there making you want to walk further and you get the grand reveal of the bell tower leading to the other grand reveal of the final spots we have to decorate time for trees not that tree I'm talking about this tree and this tree over 150 days spent in game building the city already accomplishing so much in that time but also so little looking at how much is left on this insane project with all of these buildings my creativity is tapped and that's where I need your help leave a comment down below with some names for all of these different shops we've created today if you want to be absolutely amazing give me a story about the people that live inside of them it's a fantasy world so go crazy this build has taken so much time and with tons of detail crammed into tiny corners I don't have the ability to show it all off here so I want to introduce you to my second channel flip 2 after every city building episode in hardcore I'm gonna upload a city walkthrough video to give a better vision of what I've built here. Today, I am surviving over 250 days in the nether. I've built some insane stuff in this world, but this project, this project drove me to 
insanity. I'm building a massive wither skeleton farm to flex a bit by decorating with beacons. Now, please leave a like as I've spent over a hundred hours on this video and I really appreciate the support. And double check that you're subscribed as you might watch my videos all the time, but never have subscribed. So do it right now. Flying down into the nether from the safety of the roof, I have a nether fortress hidden right back over here. And as I keep running out of fuel to smelt things inside of this world, trying to build up the city, I I thought today we could take the most convoluted way ever to get coal in this world by building a massive perimeter for a weather skeleton farm and there's a blaze spawner right over here i think i need to get rid of that one but we'll do that when we're blowing things up step one we want to dig straight up from here a great idea in the nether and we land right there now from here i need to mark out a box that is 128 blocks that way 128 that way that way and that way so i've got some digging to do First corridor is dug. Second one is dug. Well, the third one ends perfectly at the edge of a basalt delta. Okay. All four corridors are now dug out. And the next step is, well, um, I need to flatten this entire area. So I've got a lot more digging to do. First pickaxe is nearly dead. And the other's halfway already. Oh no. Two pickaxes later and nearly five shulker boxes of netherrack and probably another one or two on the ground. Time to drop these off and go repair. Oh, not safe, not safe, not safe. And we could drop off all of the netherrack back here because I want to save a good amount of this. And back to digging we go. Oh no. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. No, that was my first ever diamond pickaxe that I upgraded to netherite. Oh no. Oh, it's a sad day. We might have to go mine for netherite because I need more tools. I can't do this with one pick. After crying and mourning about my pickaxe for a good hour, we're nearly done with the first side. But this one's also very dead. I won't lose it too. Back to work we go. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up here we have four ingots and three pickaxes where one breaks three shall take its place step real quick as two of them are only efficiency four i'm gonna need two more of these books much better the farm i can already tell this is gonna be a really good one Love fire the only thing that breaks today is the pickaxe not me skull yes spending another two hours mining out the second quarter of this which you get to see here in a nice seven second time lapse here Woo! There's a lot of skeletons up here. Now it's getting a little spooky. But before we do the second half of this project, I need to head back to the overworld. If I can find my way out of here. Oh, cobblestone. We must be close. There we go. Grab me a bunch of sand. And my second favorite ingredient, gunpowder. To craft TNT. This will get us started. The eggs haunt me in this world too. I need to get out of here. To make this look even better, I want to clear out the netherrack in the bedrock ceiling. We place TNT and button and explode. Perfect. It's like a good floss. Sixteen TNT later, and we've made a good amount of progress. Just gotta clear out the rest of this. Jumping onto a live stream to work on this, as I didn't want to sit in silence by myself, I flew through exploding the nether roof. After an hour, I hadn't finished clearing out even the first quarter, so I kept at it placing TNT and activating those with buttons before fully working through the nine stacks of TNT I originally crafted. Where someone in chat mentioned I should probably just use my pickaxe as it might be faster instead of going to gather more sand and then returning to explode. And I'm happy slash sad to say they were we're right. I wasted a lot of time, but now we are moving much, much quicker, going nearly twice as fast using the pickaxe, even with running back to get anything I missed and to repair it, which has been a fantastic excuse to come look at the blue sky in Minecraft. But back into the cave we go and down into the nether yet again, where it's hard to see right now, but I'm happy to say that I removed all of the netherrack in the ceiling, including the second half of the first half. Now we have the second half of the whole thing left to go for this time. I want to see if it's going to go quicker if I literally just mine them all and do the ceiling as I'm moving. Hello, Enderman. I'm home. Tools are all repaired. Back to the digging for one final round. 
But Assault Delta is bringing back scary memories of Season 2 Wither Farm, so I went back to clearing out the Netherrack on the fourth corner to finish off the major part of the grind on this project. Another fresh set of pickaxes and only four more rows of Nether and Blackstone and Blackstone left to go. Netherrack should now be done mostly the only thing remaining is the basalt delta corner and this one's gonna take quite a while except i think i want to save the basalt because i definitely don't need the nether egg the entire roof is now cleared out and i need to bring this all down at least 15 blocks to run tnt dupers across to do the rest of the work for me flying across the world to the desert i started going crazy mining for as much sand as i could fill up my shulker boxes spending over an hour here just gathering sand clearing back the desert farther and farther reaching all the way to the edges of the river biome slowly this entire biome is just being removed for building but i'm definitely not the bad guy right so naturally i went to the gas farm and started crafting all of the sand into explosives over 16 stacks of tnt in hand i got to work placing it all down manually so i could keep the project moving forward after nearly 50 days in game already spent destroying the nether let's start the button in the corner now we back up real far yes oh yes 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 <gasps> ancient debris it's working it's working oh it's working so well <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Now we just got to get rid of all of the lava. Okay. Hey, Wither Skeleton, I'm coming for you. Finally removing all of the lava and this section is ready for flying machines. The gas farm is unfortunately out of gunpowder with a total of 11 left. But I've got an idea I really want to try out. A small AFK session should fix this and hopefully the farm still works. It most definitely did not work, but a torch grid should fix it. It's a good thing we're building a lamp farm because I ran out of coal for torches. New plan. Wait, huh? Crisis averted. We have TNT. I think I can use a tunnel bore type system to remove the upper layers. We're at nearly a full moon tonight and I need a ton of slime blocks. So time for a little AFK session at the slime farm this one should actually work with the slime blocks acquired i went off to gather everything else i need to create borkon's tnt tunnel bore from grabbing iron to craft pistons and sticky pistons then stopping by the bartering farm to grab quartz to craft observers i've now spent about an hour gathering resources and i really hope this farm works as i definitely have not tested it The first set of two should now be completed, but before I can test any of this, I need to build them going all the way down to the far end. With large redstone builds like this, I am pretty new to making them. So initially I was completing each section at once, building out the TNT launchers, then branching over and moving on to the next piece. But an hour in, I realized it might be easier to complete each thing component by component. Carrying on with building the activation system in the back before blowing up even more of the TNT launchers I'm trying to create as I'm running out of resources. This is really turning into a much larger project than an I anticipated. So I need a lot more resources. I'm almost completely out of pistons. But thankfully, I should at least get all these blocks back in the end. I've built seven of these so far, and uh, I have 30 more to build. Okay, let's get to it. I was able to craft everything I need except the slime blocks, so we're back. Whoa, wow, this is working really well. That should be enough. Time to finish the TNT launchers. And they are all done, finally. Before we see if this thing even works, I gotta do something very important. And I'm gonna need two of these. Before I absolutely destroy this entire area, I should probably mark out where I wanna actually make this farm. And I think that'll do. One final step to prime it all, and this is where we see if it works or not. Please work. Oh, it's going. And go. Yes. Oh, I think it works. Well, step one is done. Now the terrifying part of please fire the TNT. Or not. Wait, and we fired TNT. Oh, no. Hopefully a simple fix. I just forgot to finish building this. Please work. Please. Please work. Nope, it's all off. Okay, break it all and move it back. And take three. Yes. <gasps> it's working. Might have to do a little maintenance along the way. But now we're mining in style. 
as long as I run along and patch up any of the lava spills as I go, it should be pretty easy. With the kinks ironed out, I was off to the races, shooting TNT into the mass of netherrack over and over again, while flying down to clear out all of the lava pockets found in the walls. Until I ran into a small issue. I had to manually bring down the netherrack another block or the machine was going to explode itself as it got closer. Which brings us here, two hours later, and it's time to boot up the machine and clear out the rest of this mess. Oh, ancient debris brings us up to six. I have to clean up a few patches of train along the way, but we are officially halfway. We've officially reached the far side of the perimeter. But the machine hasn't worked out quite as well as I was hoping. As next up, I want to pick up all of the slime blocks and everything else to repurpose them for the future flying machines, which means we should be able to build those again straight away. But I did get a bit unhinged at the end and just started breaking it all and letting it fall down into the lava. This year was everything I was able to secure, but I definitely lost a lot of materials. <gasps> Piston. I will take that. Next up, I need to take everything within the perimeter all the way down here to 105. Scratch that, you've seen me dig out thousands of blocks already today. So instead, here's a clip of me riding around on a strider running circles around these fools. But once more, back in the end, and I am forever grateful that I built this thing. And this thing. I have now mined 634,000 blocks with netherite pickaxes. That's a lot of blocks. Especially when 322,000 are netherrack. I'm done, I don't wanna mine anymore. Before I build another flying machine, I need a break from the bleak nether. And I almost forgot to it's time to build a field. The number one field I've been asked to plant forever is a sunflower field. And I haven't, well, because it uh, looks up the mountain. And for my prime aesthetic viewing location, you just see the back. However, my big brain idea is to build a sunflower field next to the birch forest on the far side of the river. Just like your big brain move of the day would be subscribing, as I've already cleared over 300,000 blocks in this video and now planted a pretty field, so I think it's an even trade. That being said, I really love this little pop of color over here. And one final step is gonna be connecting with a shovel, connecting this up to the main road. Perfect, look at that. Oh, I love it, yeah. We need, we need more colorful fields over there. Initially, I wanted the cool spectacle of building a bunch of tiny TNT machines and just watching the TNT rain down upon the nether. But for my own sanity's sake, I'm gonna be taking the quicker route. I've used it before, so we're building Raiseworks TNT Quarry. This thing is so small for how amazing it is for clearing out areas. And the other side is now assembled too. Now, if I break this redstone, the boom should happen. It's going, it's going. I missed the lava. It's, it's, I'm gonna play it safe and go after. I'm not dying for this. <laughs> oh, a lot of lava. Cleaning up this lava real quick. Hopefully we can verify that it's actually gonna come back. And then I just need to keep on the lookout for more and more lava. Moment of truth. And it's coming home. Oh, good. Oh, bad. Oh, so much lava. Yep, I gotta go. I gotta go. Between gas and having to dodge all of the TNT coming out. Oh, this is a lot more stressful than I thought it'd be. Don't hit the machine. And drive by lava. Nice. I did not plan for this at all, but the blaze farm is just outside. Oh, that's good. I thought it was goner for sure. I am by no means a technical Minecraft player, but something about clearing out a massive chunk of the nether is really, really satisfying. Outside of almost burning in the lava, trying to keep the area clear, the 25 plus hours of work I've already put in at this point are really starting to pay off and I can feel the lamps coming soon. Somehow I did just lose my minecart. So I've stopped the machine and we've got to fix it. They're right there. I plan to stop the machine anyways, as well, uh, I only have 30 rockets left to my name right now. My entire ender chest is empty too. But ancient debris, that does bring me up to a whopping 44 ancient debris. And there's still a few more floating. But before we can get any of those, one, I need to get rid of this lava. That should hopefully do it. Now, before I forget and send these machines off again, let's fix them. And there's number two. Now, just look at the insane amount of progress we've already have. Now, let's hope the gas farm has gotten a little gunpowder for me before I can't fly. Please, 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 please. Uh, 
not much. These rockets should at least last me a little while and free gunpowder. For now, back to Boom Boom. While the machine was working, I flew around gathering up all of the ancient debris that had been revealed while clearing up any lava messes that happened to pop up along the way. And trying to kill some wither skellies for skulls since I do need some wither roses later. But no luck there quite yet, so instead it's time to start on the most painful task clearing out this lava lake. Ah, yes, the sky is already crying for my pain. But I'm going to need an insane amount of scaffolding so we can use the quarry as a bamboo farm for now. And while that has grown up, a trip to the mines. To my first experience farm in this world, the triple spider spawner. I need a lot of string. We got a lot of string. Also, a glow squid farm. That right there should do it. Just gotta gather it all up. I might have made a slight mistake here. I'm already full of bamboo. <laughs> and there's a lot more. That's gonna be a problem for another day as I'm working in the nether right now. Or, or another day. No, not another day. Now I can at least do two things at once. So if I start the machine up again, kill a gas for good measure, we can use all of the scaffolding to start to clear out the lava. Because for some reason, it is the best way to clear lava in this game. It's a wee bit spooky down here. I've been making a lot of progress out here, but I definitely keep lighting myself on fire. So it's almost back. Let's go stop this. Please make it, make it, make it. Got it. Perfect. Okay. Fire res pot time. And then mess continues. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. I'm thinking to get started, we just go with nine. Awkward potions plus magma cream and redstone. I now have nine eight minute fire resist potions, which means it's hot tub time. But first, how much gravel do we have? Not much, pretty much none. Yep, basically nothing. This is a decent amount, and I guess I could have gotten the fire resist potions literally right here. We will call this a learning moment. For now, time to get started <laughs> again and see what happens with this mess. Keep flying, keep flying, get in there. I think the best way to do this is actually gonna be to drop gravel in and make a big box. In the time it took me to manually clear out this area using the scaffolding, the quarry machine was able to remove this much of the land. I'd be lying if I didn't say I have any regrets right now. Just a little more lava to clear out. And now you might ask why on the regrets. Because well, I spent another four hours clearing out all of this lava in the corner. And I still have all that left to do, which is so incredibly painful as it goes all the way down to bedrock. But at least I can get a lot of the scaffolding back and keep going. Ah, there we go. But good news, Piggy. We are officially past halfway destroying your homeland. Oh, it's fantastic. I hope I don't regret that one. But no, I flipped the redstone tutorial following engineering professional. I spent some more time brewing up fire resist potions and researching. I found a design by Sisif. I'll leave a link in the description for a liquid clearing flying machine. We're getting even more technical today. Quick uh, sidebar here. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments as it's way out of the norm for me. It's been a crazy project to do, but I'm curious what y'all think. I've got everything I need right here to create the lava clearing machine, I think think. But first, before I can really do much, I need to wall off the area with gravel like I did right over there. And I'm in the lava. Oh, I'm glad I got potions. From there, I used all of the gravel I still had left in my stores to stretch all the way around, but it wasn't quite enough. In order to get more gravel, I need to make a quick trip across the nether to the gold farm and not fall off Aha! Where I've still got a decent amount of gold over here. But well, that's not gonna be quite enough. I might as well get rid of all this rotten flesh for now and hope I don't crash my world. Just a little bit of rotten flesh. Hopefully this is fine and just despawns while I sit in the nether for a few. Oh, that's really laggy. Now I just sit all the way at the top up here. Come my little piggies. About an hour later and we have a ton of gold where we can head back to the center of the nether hub and start bartering with a few of our piggy boys. There we go. All of the gold is now queued up and you just gotta wait a little longer for these guys. Side quest complete. I now have a little over two shulker boxes of gravel for ourselves. So I should be able to hopefully finish off at least at least this corner going all the way down. Wait, what? What's going on? Why am I hearing burning? Besides me being on fire. Souls, don't tell me. No! Oh, I have to swim through the lava all the way to place this bottom row in. 
I get that this is lava, but man, it would be nice to be able to see down here. I just finished this. No. Which means it's time for the Flip Redstone Professional Engineer to get to work. As I was setting up the flying machine, I realized that the entire fortress is buried underneath the lava still. So I think I need to manually remove it. Nether fortress crisis averted, removing this last line of netherrack and falling in the lava. I'm very thankful for fire resist. And this right here should start the machine. Yes, it's going. <gasps> Look at it. Look at it go. All that lava. If I did this correctly, it should go down and not down. I think I can fix this by pushing this down. I think I fixed it. And now we go. Well, this first one's working here. I think I want to assemble a second one right next door so we can do two at once. I added in another wall of gravel over here and I'm working on getting rid of the lava in the back with a little bit of scaffolding. With the inflammable scaffolding wall in place, I can now remove this back section. We got a little bit more working room. As I've got to reset this flying machine and move it all forward a block. And fire resist is important. We should now be fixed. And next up, unfortunately, all the scaffolding's gonna get burned in the lava as I've got to remove it so the flying machines don't catch. Oh, this hurts. Now let's hope this works this time. Activating that guy, he's going off and activating this one. Even if I have to do this manually and send them each time, it's still so much faster than me doing the scaffolding method. And now for the test, this should not be getting pushed down. It should just be sent right back and it broke. Why is it breaking? This one worked. What? What's the difference? They're the exact same. Second guy comes back and gets pushed down and goes off again. Okay, he is completely set and working. What is wrong with number one? These machines are being a bit temperamental and keep breaking on me. But even with that, building the flying machines to clear the lava has probably already saved me about six hours. At this point, however, the gas have blown them up and I have run out of fire resist potions. So I think it's time for a little break to the overworld. Except you're going down first. Where I can have a peaceful moment, brewing up a few more piggy fire potions. And much better. With the new potions acquired, I've been working on this project for well over two weeks IRL. So I decided to take a quick little break and let the TNT core machine run to remove all of the final bits of land remaining on the perimeter above lava level. All while I sat on my little box of emotions made of glass. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is not now, not gas, gas. I'm ranting. I'm ranting. Leave me alone to rant. Now, where was I? Ra, right. My, my disappointment. Here I am in the direct center of this perimeter. And well, look at that stupid little wither skeleton over there. Stupid little blazes and wither skeletons and skeletons still spawned in on supposedly that side of the perimeter. I need to make it bigger. Every other side is totally fine. That side, at least like three or four blocks back. Nope, a lot of blocks. He's pretty far back. <sighs> Before I end up in a pit of despair, I need to finish building it. So it's time to get back to removing the lava in this perimeter and the gas. It looks like these guys are stuck. So, yep, just as I thought. Okay, right. So everything over here is shallow. So if instead I send this guy off going backwards, I might be able to get a little bit more of the lava cleared. Okay, there it goes. And here goes the so... Nope, that's the wrong way. <laughs> oh, they're just taking the cell sand with them. That might cause a problem. I should fix that. Okay, well, those go. I want to fly around over here and pick up all the floating ancient debris while I can. 16 more ancient debris acquired, bringing my total up to a stack and three. That's how much ancient debris you get from clearing all this. Worth it, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. The flying machines appear to have broken again, which means this should all be the bottom layer. So if we block it all out with some scaffolding, it should actually be pretty easy to remove. with a tiny bit more hand holding. There we go. From here began the process of placing down all of the scaffolding I had in my shulker box to remove the lava, then picking it all right back up again, besides the farthest wall, and then placing it all right back down on the other side. But finally, the first quadrant is all done as I'm in a pit all the way down here. Not of despair though. I know, I'm as surprised as you are because this entire trench is now clear of lava. Except back there, we don't look there. With this done, I can now clear up the old flying machines no saving materials please no no not the slide blocks those are difficult not the no not the lava oh, no. i hate everything now 
Stop it! <laughs> On to the second where I have a formulae now. Construction of the flying machines, then building the extension to the gravel wall, the bouncy back stations, and finally turning on the machines just to see how much they could clear out, which was going great until the lava nation attacked. And by lava nation, well, I mean the ends here that have consumed, absolutely consumed. Ow. Nope, 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 nope. I'm complaining about the other part of the nether right now, not you at this very moment. Please just take, wait your turn. The Lava Nation, the Gas Nation, the Skeleton Nation, they're all attacking. Don't mind the arrow on my head. And my knee, oh no, my adventuring. But somehow my flying machines have been absolutely consumed by the lava. I don't, don't really know. And this is my final fire resist potion. So I've got to go make some more and get more scaffolding as I've, this is all I got left. While I'm up here and thinking about it, I'm going to grab some soul speed too for my boots. As well as really hope I can repair my bow. Good old booties. And please, 33 levels. Oh, okay, fine. Zooming through the next section. And now we can take some torches and recover all of this gravel to reuse. Which I just realized I don't need any of these torches. As we're on soul sand, so I literally just have to do this and it ended i've been working on a new gravel wall coming all the way back here as i think this side probably needs to be done manually unfortunately but this way seems to be all flowing lava so i'm hoping i can put a gravel line in here oh no that's me in the gravel nope not a flip in the lava a gravel in the lava yep that is helping a lot this was all covered in lava a second ago look at it fade away this seemed to be working very well to show actually how much work I have left to do instead of just seeing lava everywhere. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel or maybe the lack of light with no lava on this project now that I actually know how much space I really have left to clear. I didn't think there could be anything worse than clearing lava caves and by that I definitely mean the lava lakes until I go right here and I've been working on clearing out a lava cave as this is just so much more painful than anything else could be but I think this might finally be the end no my scaffolding oh it's been a day but clearing out these little bits of bamboo scaffolding left over my oh my is this a serotonin boost right here I'm so happy to show you all that most of this area was actually just flowing lava and or one layer deep so it was really easy to get rid of all of this and by that i mean it's been about six hours but you know we're here that's fine yeah and more importantly i'm now on day 2518 before we get back into the lava clearing i've really been wanting to remove these floating islands over here as i keep running into them when i go from the nether hub to back out here and i think it'll just look a lot better having a giant open hole in the side of the nether And that right there is looking a heck of a lot better. Now I've nearly run out of gravel yet again. So I'm off to the gold farm to craft up even more gold where we can hopefully get lucky with the bartering system for some major gravel stunks. Just under one and a half shulker boxes of gold ingots are ready to go. And we can drop some in each of these. And we've already got a decent amount of gravel here ready to go that was just sitting and waiting. Gravel acquired, and it's time to build out the final lines in the lava just to see how many more channels I need to clear with the flying machines before this is finished. Now from here, you've probably got an idea about how all this goes. Bring some more spicy water potions, building even more flying machines, clearing the land underneath the lava, sending the flying machines off. Ah! Stupid gas, they're everywhere. And it got stuck instantly. Don't you dare blow it up. More time spent draining the lava where needed with scaffolding. Hour after hour passed by clearing out all of these zones. While fighting many, many gas. No, 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 no. No, I just finished building it. No, I just finished that. Oh, I hate gas. Oh, I hate gas so much. I'm going to murder them all in this video game. But all that starting another round of doing the same thing, tearing down the old gravel walls, and then placing them right back down again. Leading to this very moment where I christen the the lava banana or the lava nanana. -na -na. Why does that sound like something Night Elf from World of Warcraft? I don't know. I'm a nerd. Back to lava clearing. Oh, that's a lot of piglins. Nearly eight hours have passed at this point in time and I can finally see some of the progress coming through as a lot of mobs are really starting to spawn down here in the middle. Nah, where is he? Where's that ghast? Is he gone? Okay. 
No, there he is. Oh, they're getting sneaky. Nearly done with this entire corner. One more deep pit of lava to clear out with all the scaffolding here. And then I think I can finally move on. Now for the super satisfying part of removing all of this scaffolding. Just got to find the part it's stuck to. Yes. There it goes. This feels so satisfying. A lot of good scaffolding has been lost to the spicy water, but look at this. Oh, progress is being made. Just this big old section. Then we clear out the banana and only one quarter remains. Even less, actually. Third quarter of the perimeter is now cleared out. Um, now, now it's, now it's, now it's cleared out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. How did I miss this? Ancient debris. It fell in the banana. We'll clear out the banana here in a moment, but check this out. I've already started on the final quarter over here. Not even, it's a lot smaller. And I think flying machines can help, but uh, this thing's here. And well, uh, it's gotta go. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe I gotta go. Oh, I gotta go. There are four of them. Guess I am trying to make a place to spawn a bunch of them. So that's a good sign. Just clearing up the last of the pillar, sunk it down into the lava here, and we'll be good to go. For next up, I want to try a new flying machine design that's actually, well, my own design. Bit more manual, but hopefully it doesn't break as often. Which, it just has some blocks attached on the bottom, and then I'll manually move it down as I go, but we could build a bunch of them. That, that obviously is a way to stop it. Okay, let's try this again. And number two. The idea for all these is that they don't get caught up on any blocks like that that the old one would and i think it's gonna work out pretty well so far this is going really quick oh i just lost two shulkers i'm so tired of gas i just lost shulker boxes this is working great clearing out all of the lava until the gas nation attacked i did lose my shulker box of scaffolding in the mess so this is all i've got left here which means clearing these lower sections is taking a wee bit longer but i decided to be a little bit smarter and move my shulker box mess back to this little safety hole where I, unfortunately, I lost my shulker box of food. Oh, this is all I got left. Uh-oh. But in the meantime, it's time to at least clear out a little bit more of this top layer of lava. Slowly, it all disappears. One final push, clearing out the lava in this final corner. Over 80 hours have been spent on this project so far, trying to clear the perimeter up until this point where it's finally time. Time to explode things once again. And get rid of all the gas spawns, you two. And you. First up here, I need to tear down the machine and build it back up lower in the world. While also cleaning up the walls so the machine doesn't get stuck. Before I can launch this bad boy, not that guy, that guy. I need to clean up all of these gravel walls as well. Uh, any explosions are just going to destroy them. And then the lava gets back in and we don't want the lava to get back in. To stop the lava from ruining everything, I want to take some of this obsidian I've been leaving in my front yard and crying obsidian here from the bartering farms, clearing the skies very quickly and the first wall is now done second side should now be done as well beyond the lava third side is now done and off to the fourth and i think i can start the machine and there it goes <laughs> and there goes all the lava oh i might regret this one lava removed and away it goes destroying everything and clearing it all down to the bedrock even flossing the bedrock itself i had to babysit this one a good amount with all of the mini lava sources hidden down there but overall this has taken a good while to clear out the first section where i'm now up to 91 ancient debris but the machine has broken and there's a lot more ancient debris to gather around here don't blow up the machine somehow this desynced but this should fix it yes there it goes okay and hopefully these are lined up again here and that'll be totally fine well that machine's going on i can just gather up as much of the bedrock i can get my hands on ancient debris not bedrock we we're not breaking that no that's that that stays just like you little guy and your cute little chicken over there or just the chicken a few moments later, and I think I got all of the ancient debris so far. And check this out. Two stacks and 16. 80 hours of work for a little over two stacks of ancient debris so far. Oh, it's been worth it. Yay. And now my lava watch continues. I'm on it. Let's do it. Yeah. Destruction continued and lava continued to be a problem as I babysat the machine for another few hours where unfortunately a gas did manage to blow up the machine with a fireball once so I had to rebuild it from scratch. Bringing the total time for this up to nine hours. Where things are a little noisy but we are just over. Don't you dare do it. 
we're just over halfway done as my little afk platform is the halfway point oh it's getting there and i've got a lot more ancient debris to grab look how many ancient debbies i have over here oh i'm gonna be able to make so many decorative lodestones we're up to 233 that is absurd and there's another and another and don't mind if i do starting the final seven hour stint destroying the remaining land in a perimeter you can see here in a nice seven seconds and it is done well mostly i still need to clean up that side a bit more that's a future foot problem just like me stuck in this hole okay and the ancient debris total is now up to five stacks and five to summarize this project so far i transformed my nether from this to a massive hole with nothing inside of it now before i can fill it with a wither skeleton farm for lamps i need to build another farm that requires killing wither skeletons to make yeah thankfully i already have two wither skeleton skulls so how hard can it be to get a third i flew into the nether to start killing wither skeletons and well uh this was the first kill neat uh <laughs> there we go all right let's move on off to the end where a magic mushroom here is gonna make this all possible goodbye portal building an entire spawning platform for endermen with one endermite at the top perfect easy does it then flooding the entire surrounding area to spawn proof it and summoning in a wither right here and hopefully this works please please work yep he's now I just remove the water and get rid of that. Ooh. Oh, it's breaking things. Now we fix this. And then I stand up here and watch the Enderman die. Oh, beautiful. We have Wither Roses. Just gonna load up on these. Goodbye, Mr. Wither. You've been great. Back into my lovely pit of despair. It's finally time to build up this Wither Skeleton Farm. Step one, spawning platform. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Yep, the farm's gonna work great. The farm's gonna work absolutely fantastic. <laughs> To get started, we disable the blazes. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, there's so many mobs. Farm's gonna be great, everybody. Farm's gonna be absolutely great. Before I finish the platform, we can go on to step two, where I wanna surround this whole thing with some nice, pretty colors to stop spawning. And here I was thinking this would be a really, really simple thing just to get done super fast, and I've been under constant attack by blazes, and the entire thing's on fire. Ah, <sighs> quiet. Much quieter. Step three, we lure a piggy to the middle. Excuse me, coming through very quickly. Whoop and into the middle please good sir yes thank you flippy piggy step question mark where i did a bunch of fancy stuff setting up a killing chamber and making it all work kind of correctly i'm now out in the wild looking for two good boys to help me out hi first good boy come here oh i have a blue collar come on let's go oh you're a bloodthirsty killer come here come here no be my friend don't kill the sheep no be with me don't look at the sheepy look at me or murder the sheep that's that's fine too get it yep another one. Oh you did great come here okay over here please and take a seat and you would go into the nether now if we carefully take each dog no doggy don't you don't jump off one dog in and second dog next up planting the garden of death all done i hope now we get the wither skeletons i hope oh they're coming in. oh the wither skeletons there we go now it's speeding up and nothing yep here we are so i didn't waste the last 90 hours right the farmer's working well so far but there are still a lot of improvements to be made i'm gonna leave the pups farming away for me right now as we already have seven wither skeleton skulls but i've realized there's still a few blocks that i've gotta clear back further and it should help speed up the farm even more now i'm really hoping a little machine like this is gonna work out for me back to the tnt life we go i swear i don't just blow things up in this game as much as i want to blow up all of minecraft right now after making this video but this final area did need to be pushed back next some blackstone slabs on top of the crying obsidian might help a touch more now this is looking much much better here at the pup powered lamp farm time to take some wither skeleton skulls and some soul sand where it's finally time to use the giant entry over 100 hours spent on this episode alone with millions of blocks removed in the nether leading up to this very moment where i can flex by building a ton of beacons to use for building lamps inside of my city yep that was the whole purpose 
2,672 days survived in hardcore Minecraft. And it is time to refocus on building in the overworld to continue my city project. Today, I'm taking on the challenge of building for 24 hours inside of hardcore Minecraft to see just how much I can add to this world. Last episode, I finished building a massive perimeter inside of the nether for a lamp farm. To start off this 24 hour building grind, I need some coal to craft a bunch of torches so I can finally fix my gas farm and have access to gunpowder again. Right, now the farm should be functioning again. With that sorted, next up, I want to upgrade the storage room in the overworld as it's, uh, ooh, it's a bit of a mess right now. It's a little bit of a mess. Crafting chests, hoppers, repeaters, and comparators. I can start by tearing out all of the chests leading up to here. I hooked up the hoppers around a corner before building out the sorting system on the back side, where I was one comparator short, of course, so I had to run down and mine some stone and crafted up another to finish off the back. Thankfully, I had everything else on. On me before filling in the hoppers and some chests. The next step in here is going to be placing some gunpowder in and some kelp. The last three are going to be set up with gas tears instead. Reason being is I'm ending up with so many eggs inside this farm and I want to replace that block with a dropper to throw them in some lava, which is now in place. And if I put eggs and arrows in here, they will start dispensing. Perfect. Yes. Ooh, trader. What do you have, buddy? What do you have? <gasps> Small drip leaf. You stay right there. Let me get my wallet. Give me your trip leaf. Thank you. Everything appears to be looking, so a few composters added on top should help with the lag. And while those cycle through, I think it's time to give this a new AFK test. <laughs> So the whole purpose of the torches was to remove the skeleton spawns and well, that didn't work out in the slightest. This portal and storage system in the sky is looking uh, gross. So I wanna spend some time hiding it. I haven't done a landscaping project in a very, very long time. So I think it's gonna be super fun. First off though, how much light gray? Not any. I'm basically out. Okay. The shears are still in there. Okay. That's good. That's good. We haven't run out. The sheep is just not growing as well. Running over the city. I should have some hay in here somewhere. With this, I can dye all the sheep in here like gray. And then we just breed them up a few times. And then we manually harvest some wool. To get started, I ran over to the quarry, picking up some stone from the stone storage room, breeding up the sheep one more time on my way over to the portal. With that out of the way, step one is the shape. I started plopping down stone to create some rough outlines for the shape of a big rock sticking out of the side of the hill to give myself space to build on top of later. Next, taking some dirt to create a flatter top section to fill out the terrain for easier building. And now I present to you whale rock. You see the little eye there. We got a big old mouth and a nose. Yeah, my plan here was to make this really geometric and just a lot of sharp lines. So I think I need to try this one again. Uh, like maybe we cut a triangle out of here and just bring it back a lot. And I think the whale has started to disappear a little bit by bringing that back in. Perfect. So I know the whole purpose of this was to actually, you know, hide this farm, but it's kind of sticking out too far. And I want to see if I take right down from here, if I can just move the farm inside the rock. Instead of moving the entire machine, I am just moving the portal and a small collection system down into the rock to see if it will work before I move everything else. Now we got to go to the nether and spawn some gas to the overworld. A few seconds up here at the top should do it so we don't release an army of jellyfish into the overworld. Good news so far, no jellyfish fish flying around. Did we get any drops? Yes. Oh, it works. Oh, that's so good. Right. Time to move the rest down. Sorter is now rebuilt inside the rock with two extra things on the end for arrows and bones. I might as well embrace it. The eggs, however, they go into the lava. No, nope, no nope. lava into the lava. I've gotten extremely carried away with this build. It was meant to be a small part of the 24 hours, but instead now I'm building a giant monolithic structure on the rock after hiding the farm inside the rock. My goal has been to tell a story in this world without using words. And I think this structure is really gonna help pull that off. Especially because I wanna create a focusing lens of sort here in the middle, which might've been powered by something in the ancient past. But that one is, well, for the comments to decide. As next up, I need to fill in the shape and texture this monstrosity. Starting with some moss, crafting that into mossy cobblestone, regular cobblestone too. I've got some bas salt here that could be nice. Maybe we throw some deep slate in the mix too. 
and a bunch of other random blocks to add some detail. Spending another hour detailing the build and working on the gradient from moss to stone and using some basalt and the deep slate as a dark shadow to give it some depth, keeping it earthy, still blending in with the terrain, but something less natural. To make this look even more aged and a part of the environment, I'm thinking some tall grass on top could help a bunch. Tall grass is on and I'm really building this to view it from all the way back here at the city. And yup, that is looking pretty great. No, I think this will work. I just put a beacon right down here, shining directly up the center. And if we can build this into like a regen beacon, that'd be kind of nice to have for one. And two, it would look really cool. And it works. Oh, check that out. I love it. Well, let's change it to light blue going up. Now we just set this up with some resistance and regen, and it's a nice little buff tower. Now I intentionally left this side blank here as I don't want the structure to just sit alone. I think it still really needs to be part of the landscape, so I'm thinking a small mountain coming out the side could be really cool. But before we build the mountain, Farmer Whip has a field to plant. In every episode, I plant a new field of crops in this world to keep expanding my base, spawn proofing the area with farmland, and just to build something cool. Please double check that you're subscribed as I am nearing 1.3 million subscribers and with your help, we can make that happen before the end of the year. And here we have our brand new beetroot field where things are really starting to come together down here. I've already transformed the gross gas farm into a huge monolith sitting on a rock. Now to finish this build, I need to connect the monolith to the ground by building a mountain connected to the right side. Taking a quick break here to breed up the sheep one more time, as the whole thing here has turned into a stone blob, and my cool monolith doesn't really pop anymore. For this one, I'm gonna need a lot of blocks, starting with some tough blocks, where I have plenty in storage, and acacia wood for the shadows. Here we can take some leftover gravel and sand, plus azure bluets for light gray dye, to craft light gray concrete powder. Now I've been breeding all the sheepies over here, so I can use the light gray wool for highlights. Before I get to the stone texturing, I want to take some dirt and replace some of the flatter spaces here to grow a little grass. Diving into the texturing here, I want to focus on a smaller section where this stone can be replaced with some acacia logs for a shadow. Around that, we throw in a little bit of tuff. I'm trying to work in terms of building out big blobs here, and I think that's a good start. But to balance that, we need a light or a highlight, a little like that. Before we really A-OK -okay this, I'm going to build this top section out. I keep looking at the mountain from back here and I can actually see some detail into it with the lights and shadows and I love that. Focusing on the back of the mountain first to keep practicing the style, I'm adding in the shadows and highlights trying to keep in line with the shape to make it all work together. See, we even do the backs of the builds here. Just not the sides, so moving on. Look, squirrel! I mean, distraction! As the top is now finished too. Oh, great. Just got this section of the mountain left to go. Nine hours into the mountain and monolith build itself, and the mountain is nearly finished. Just this little spot remains, and that should do it. Only the whale rock remains, and I've already detailed the eyeball lashes, and they're looking fire. Replacing more of the stone on the rock, I carried on with my new formula. Removing the stone at the base and replacing it with tuff and acacia log for a shadow, then going up to the sides and replacing that with the lighter blocks to keep the same style as was developed for the rest of the mountains. First up, I need a load of gravel to craft coarse dirt, which will replace all of the grass blocks underneath the whale. Back inside the great tree where I need a little bit of glow lichen. And that should de definitely do it. This way I can get rid of the torch spam and have a little bit more of a subtle light here with the glow lichen. And maybe some rocks that fell off the big rock. Another hour later and the mountain is completed alongside the monolith. And I gotta say, this is a pretty good transformation from earlier. This project is far from done, but I can't spend all 24 hours on this build as I've still got a lot of stuff I want to build today. Like filling in this little area around the lake with a small fishing village. First, the train needs some love.
Yes, this here should work out for the edge of the lake. Maybe turning back that a touch further. Now I just need a big flat space for building. This was going to be really boring, so I brought up the edges to kind of slope it into here a bit because building on flat terrain instantly makes the build boring. Building spot is ready to go, but I've got some extra dirt on me, so I want to fix up this little cliff thing over here too. And much better. That could be honestly a really good spot for a little orchard, but first the village. Grabbing some cobblestone from the storage and plotting out the space for some homes to go. This mess right here should be a good start. We'll add things as we need. For now, I can start etching out the shapes of all these buildings by putting some posts up. But this building is going to be a bit of a storage room and we can finish it up to the top right about there. Now, this build here isn't supposed to be a big wow factor, just another element in the world to explore. So I'm building a lot of smaller and similar structures just to make it happen. Now for the roofs in here, I'm thinking some deep slate can make it work. Cobble deep slate for this one. Left space for a chimney out the back where this should do it. Deep slate tiles can go over here. Add a little awning on this guy and then we can throw some deep slate bricks up top with the nice cobblestone chimney. Lastly, another cobble deep slate roof for the final. Next here in the center, I want to replace this with a little well. Take some fences up to the top, adding some stairs and perfect. With the base building done, next up is adding in the roadway with some coarse dirt to link all the buildings together. Leading down to the lake shore, I want to build a fishing dock. And a simple guy like this should work out. Right here on the shore, I want to add in a small little boat. More like a canoe, I guess. And I think that'll work. Up here, we can have a bit of a dry dock, making it look a little bit like they're still assembling the boat up here. And I think that'll work. Maybe we use some beehives for a small workstation of sorts back here. I can, I'll get some more decor blocks too, but that works. With all of this sorted, I want to add in a bunch of tiny details around the town to really make it appear like people are living in here. And somehow I forgot to finish the roof here. I'll do that now. With that sorted, I want to just come in here with some spruce and create a fake roof up above us. Something like this should work out. I just need some chests to throw on top. Nice. That's a good little storage room of sorts. Trying to add some more life in the build, we can take a few oak leaves and as a bonus today, add in an extra field as a little herb garden. Little guy like that should work out perfect. Next, I do have some flowers in here. And honestly, just a little flower patch along the road as you're walking in could be kind of cute. Yeah, why not? Now be against the time of running around and just adding in a bunch of random details around the village to make it pop a little bit more. With every build in this world, I want to make it look a little overgrown. So adding in some glow berries and glow lichen, we can help spawn proof things and just make it look a little bit better in the process. Now I've had these axolotls sitting in the shulker box for uh, probably eight, nine months and they can just go live in here. Have fun, my children. Have fun, be free. Three hours ago, this area started out with absolutely nothing nothing interesting inside of it. Now it's an awesome little fishing village full of so much detail, leaving me with only seven hours left of time to build in this video. Right, with the village built, I've kind of realized something. I have no fishermen villagers in this world and they have the most important trade I could ever need, campfires. Tackling the building at the end of the villager trading cavern, I'm clearing out a room to build a new trading hall, adding in the villager apartments while leaving space in the middle to add a fish tank for decoration. Some sand at the bottom and dark prismarine and for the walls. I do have some leftover coral that I want to add in to decorate the tank as well. Then running over to the coral reef to rehome some local fish to their new fancy fish tank. Getting all of those dudes added into the tank and spending some time decorating the trading hall with deep slate and strip dark oak logs. Now for the important aspect, villagers. Digging out a tunnel back to the other trading halls to connect to my rail network, then slapping some rails down for easy villager movement, all to sit AFK because I forgot to start the the villager breeder before doing this, which leads us back to now where I have three villagers ready to go and I need like nine. So let's get started. A bucket of cod, my favorite. Not. One in place, seven to go. I now have eight more cod added into the lake. Next with a few pieces of gold, I can move the last guy here up into his position. Bunch of golden apples, we'll leave the rest in here. And then I'm hoping I just slid this crafting table into the middle. It didn't hit any of them. Okay, I just wasted a potion.
And now we can get COD for super cheap. But off you go, trade me the campfires. Now I just need to get, unfortunately, a lot of buckets of COD where we only keep the buckets. And there we have it, our first campfire trade and a second one. I never intended this to be a COD sanctuary, but here we are. That's a lot of fish in the pond. But I also have over a stack of campfires. Four hours remain on this challenge before time is up. Last episode, I built this crazy perimeter in the nether, which yielded a ton of ancient debris. Using the coal from my wither skeleton farm, we can start to smelt this down. But some more blast furnaces might help. Dad, they want my ancient debris. No. Ah. The emergency. Flint and steel. I hope this works. Yes. After a little bit of a fight, the netherite scraps are all smelted down. And we can make ourselves <laughs> 82 netherite ingots, which is nine blocks of netherite. To, and an extra scrap. I'm using these for lodestones or maybe some gear. We'll find out later. Working my way downtown, walking slowly through the city where I want to spend a few hours building. I was recently in Italy for my honeymoon and I love the plaza in Siena. Naturally, here's a picture of me and my wife eating gelato there. First, I need space to build as the mountain here is a little in the way. A stew ready to go. With that, I got to work clearing out a good amount of space at the end of the road to build up the plaza and future town hall with one very broken pickaxe later. My goal was to build this entire section, but with only two and a half hours remaining, ain't nobody got time for that. We can still work on creating the plaza floor for now though. Starting with a half circle here out of stone and oh, my pickaxe, right, I should fix this. And I'd like some more skulls to decorate with beacons so we can repair it here. Much, much better. And we've got 14 skulls. 15 skulls. I would like to use bricks and polished andesite for the plaza floor, where I've got plenty of andesite and no bricks. But I've got stonemasons we can use to try out. Stonemason, buy brick, craft brick, block, make slab. Starting by bordering this half circle we made here with polished andesite. Perfect. I want to slope this down so we go from a full block to a slab layer for a few and back to full blocks. But like the plaza in Siena, I want to add some lines striping out to the corners so it's just not boring in the middle. Dividing this up into a bunch of hopefully equal size shapes. With the slices in place, I decided to use bricks for the floor to bring in the warm tone representing this city quarter. Adding some glow lichen in along should help to spawn proof this. From what I can tell, the entire brick area is now spawn proof. The outside, however, not so much, so beacon lamp. And to look at amazement in this beautiful landscape, benches. And that looks great this way. And that's the only way we're going to see it from for now. I'm not even going to turn around. Just going to walk on out of here. Just over one hour remains, and I've been racking my brain trying to find something I can build in that time frame. And back to the monolith we go. As I want to create some custom trees to flipify this place. Being right next to my birch forest, we got to use the best tree in the game. Quickly stacking up some tree trunks, I got to work placing in a few trees around the monolith to help further connect it into the landscape. Trying to make the tree is at the top of the mountain a little bit shorter to help with the perspective of this build, still feeling great. This is looking great so far, but next up, I'd like to add in some tall grass, but getting rid of the flowers. Lastly, maybe we add some of the yellow flowers over here for just a little patch of flowers. And I might have one more little crazy idea. I think I can carve a waterfall starting from up there, coming all the way down through here and just disappearing off that way, where it can come down here, drop down into this tough block land there and then hopefully just keep on trucking now hopefully this will work before i flood everything yes there it goes oh it's working i love that oh i'm so happy i did this with a little bit more love the monument is looking grand i have just about 20 minutes remaining on my timer before the 24 hours are up and i thought a great final touch would be to finally update the world map as it's been a few episodes well now that one's newer, but I don't know when it was last updated. For starters, I'm gonna need 35 empty maps. That's not gonna do it. First here, I need to take the old maps and duplicate them. 
With all of the maps ready to go, we need to take one of each of them, flying around in the world to update them all. Where uh, nothing has changed here. Or here. But here, the city! More city! And the monolith has made it on. Spending my last few minutes on this challenge, flying around the world to update all 35 maps. Where they are ready to go inside of here. I believe I have a stash of sticks over here somewhere. Yes, perfect. For this map, I think we take this corner of the room and I'll actually put a sign on it this time. 35 item frames down. Next, I need to take all of the maps and lock them into place. Then slap them all on the wall. And here we have it, 35 updated maps. December 2022, episode 25. That is looking really good, especially with my overgrown quarry and shulker box mess. You know what? It's an accurate representation of the world. Today, I am building my first ever mansion in hardcore Minecraft, serving as a meeting hall for my massive Minecraft city, fully equipped with a beautiful bell tower, which led me to the deep dark for the very first time in this 2,750 day old hardcore world. And to calm my anxiety, I'm building some gardens into the mountainside, all to assemble my dream Minecraft mansion. Before starting, double check that you're subscribed as well. YouTube might have unsubscribed you, causing you to miss out on my videos. Today's journey begins with a lovely green hill where I've already spent over an hour clearing out this mountain to create space for my mansion, using a large amount of the space for a plaza in front. And I've got so much stone in here now, and I'd really like some smooth stone to work with. Flying down into the cave, I can toss a shulker of stone into the super smelter. With the magic of editing, I now have a shulker of smooth stone for a small sidewalk here in front of my mansion. Going for aesthetics here, I want to use some deep slate and polished deep slate to create a trim around the base of my mansion, where I've run into a small problem and I need to move a mountain to fix it. Back at it again here with the beacon. Spending another hour clearing out the mountain space behind my mansion so I can actually fit the build in here. Leaving a big future foot problem of this gross wall. And maybe a even larger sugar monster. Current foot problem of two very broken pickaxes. Quick break from building, we can repair all the pickaxes. This is currently just purely gray. So I need a few little planters and some street lights here in front. Perfect. Next up, the mansion. Throwing a pillar up here in the middle, I want to create a grand bell tower to see easily from around the city. Leaving space for a grand doorway here in the center. Right here in the center, though, I'd like to include a big old window made out of cyan and light blue. The window's a wee bit flat, so we can fix it with some more smooth sandstone. Much better. Breaking the tower into multiple layers, I started stacking each of them up on top of each other, sticking with a warmer block palette, but introducing some fun light blue accent colors. Now this tower is inspired by some build I found on Pinterest, but it kept linking me to cooking websites, so I couldn't find the original person who built it. So if you recognize it, please leave a comment down below. Not only is this a bell or soul lantern tower, but it's also a clock tower. We're in this world, it's always three o'clock. And three o'clock means it's time to figure out what I'm putting up here. And uh, well, I've got an idea. But first, it's time to plant a field. Maybe you have shulker boxes. No, 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 actual field. Before I risk everything to finish decorating this tower, episode 26 brings the 26th field into this hard core Minecraft world. 2,785 days survived so far, and so much has been accomplished on this journey. Now having survived over a year IRL, I never expected to get this far. Double check that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on this adventure. Now for something I put off for a very long time. In order to finish the top of this tower, I need a shrieker from the deep dark. It's time to risk this entire world, finding the deep dark for the very first time. But a quick side mission here as I'm almost out of rockets. Down into the monolith, where we have gunpowder self harvested gunpowder much better the deep dark was introduced in minecraft 1.19 i started this world in 1.18 meaning the chunks have already been explored around my base so they can't have the deep dark biome i have to explore a very long way away from home where i'm trying to find some very tall mountains <laughs> and this is kind of the opposite oh these chunks seem to be a little rough loading in here what have we found we found gold and some creepers trying to find my way all the way down to see if we can't find any deep dark underneath the mountain. That's not going to get me anywhere. Oh, this is looking promising. Nope, nope, nope. Maybe this cave wants to go down. Cool spider. This is a little interesting. It's a bit interesting. Oh, we're going down though. Deep slate. This could be good. I haven't went mining in this world like this in forever. This actually feels kind of nice. It's kind of nice just running around. 
Excuse me. I got my very first deep slate copper ore. <laughs> Only nearly 2,800 days in this world. Nope, 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 nope. Buddy, buddy, you've had, you've had better days, buddy. You've had better days. Maybe get out of the water. There you go. Good job. <laughs> what? Diamonds? Look at that. Oh my gosh, there's six of them. And gravel. Of course there's gravel, but there's more diamonds. Look how many there are. I just found 17 deep slate diamonds like nothing. Wait, what is, why is there a deep slate brick here? Oh, you have got to be kidding me. <gasps> oh, oh. Oh, whoa, 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 okay. We are, <laughs> we are in an ancient city now. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I wasn't expecting that at all. There's no skulk here. Why is there no skulk here? There's diamond pants though. And more diamond, diamond. No plural. Okay, there it is. Deep dark does exist. Okay, now I'm scared. Why am I happy about, I shouldn't be happy about that. I'm terrified. I see a shrieker. That is all I need. Okay, do we go for it? I think I gotta go for it. And we found all the bombs. Okay, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. And we're being a sneaky. Ooh, skeleton head. Oh, no, we went off. Okay, we have two more. Two more before the warden. Two more before... Oh, I hate this. I hate this so much. Don't mind if I do, Mr. Skeleton Head. Oh, look at the diamond hoe. Oh, this is fantastic. So I have sneak one. That's amazing. Oh, I love this so much. Oh, we're getting so much loot today. Wait, that's a catalyst. I can make Skulk at home. Skulk at home doesn't try and kill you like Skulk in the world. I think I can do this. Nope. I cannot do it. I cannot not do it at all okay <laughs> one more of the warden spawns i'm not scared and i think i slide right in here Ooh, we got a chest efficiency five and books another chest with more skulk and another diamond hoe and diamond oh there's a warden oh no there's a warden where is it where is it where is it okay buddy you just stay over there all right oh no there he is oh no oh no don't come this way don't come this way you sh Stay over there, okay? You just stay. I'm just gonna go loot this little room. He seems to be sticking around over there and not walking this way. Okay, he's gone. We're safe. Back to looting. I've never pressed the shift key so hard in my life. More diamond hose. We're getting so many hose. Other side. Wait, that's amazing. For this next chest right over here, I think we swoop in, break it with the ax, pick everything up, and look at it later. Let's go. And we run. Go, 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 go. Okay, the warden spawned. It's still dark. He's... Where is he? He should be over there and I should be safe. Yes. Look at it bobbing up and down. We got Swiss Sneak 3. I just need three more disc fragments and a few more echo shards so we can make the last items. Oh, I just heard one go off. Kate, let's do this again. Oh, hi, Warden. I see a chest. A lot of chests. Loot them all. Loot them all. Oh, I think two wardens just spawned. Everything's so dark. I'm not having a good time. Hi, buddy. Okay, we got our echo shards. I just need disc fragments. A safe chest near the exit. This should have a lot of stuff. Swift Sneak 2. Amazing. He's adorable. Hi, buddy. Oh, this this is gonna be bad. Okay, we're swooping in, we're picking up, and we're leaving. Like, instantly leaving. Did I get it? Still no more. Come on now. There's one, two more remain. Okay, there's only one shrieker up here. Nope, nope, there's two. Never mind, there's two. Okay, no plan. Next chest, here we go. Please get a few more. And I'm out. I'm out right now. Oh, I can't see anything. I don't know where I am. I don't know. Oh, there's my torch. Safety torch. Anything? Nothing? And nothing good. The warden down here is really angry. This appears to be skulk free on this side. Maybe we can get lucky. I've looted nearly every chest inside of this city, and I am still two disc fragments shy. But that's been far too many close calls. Let's find our way out of here. Behold my stuff. It's a lot of diamond hose. Where we can take one of these guys, make a compass that will hopefully never work inside of this world. Yep, keep spinning. Just keep spinning. Most importantly, we can take the skulk shrieker and toss it right here, which looks so good. There are a lot of fun shapes on this tower. It's time to add even more fun shapes to this build, but I need a lot of materials to make that happen. As always, starting by laying down some copper to oxidize, crafting up tons of granite materials, getting loads of emeralds to trade with the stonemasons for brick blocks, dyeing terracotta to orange terracotta, breaking bamboo for sticks to craft a lot of fences, and here we have everything for the walls of the mansion. Let's start by framing out the build by alternating brick and granite on the corner, and maybe for the upper floor we bring in terracotta. Repeating the same thing for the front. I want to create some big windows here that we can border with some copper. Here we can divide the floors with a little bit of a polished granite stair. Then we repeat a second window. Ending with something like this. Test part is done, and I worked on filling in the rest of this first side to see the shape in place. Underneath the windows, I'd like to add in a little bit of a flower planter with some azalea on the first and second level. For the roof line, I want to make it a little gothic, adding in some spiky bits. Yep, that's looking good. Sticking with a sandstone idea from the 
main tower window, we can carry that in right down here. Ditto for the second floor. Glass is now in place, and I've extended a little white terracotta around the side here that we can just reinforce with a few jungle signs across the top. This build is meant to be symmetrical. With the one front side finish, I set off repeating this to the other. Now tackling the end bits over here, I want to first carry the white terracotta up to make it even. Now for the end, this is where I want to bring in a pop of color. Dripstone blocks to the base, and then we bring in the orange terracotta coming all the way up. Leaving space for a few windows in here, looking at the beautiful rock. Rimming out the windows here again with some sandstone for a little bit of a pop. But as this is a bigger one, I want to break up the middle here with a little pillar. And some bushes in the front. Adding in some glass here for the windows, and that'll do. And you guessed it, repeating this to the other side too. But wait, subscribe now, and there's more. The entire back is the same, but wait for it. Again, less windows. Starting from a Minecraft mountain, I have now carved out a great mansion from the stone. Just a bit of a convertible mansion. For the roof, I want to make a strong contrast. Taking some cobbled deep slate, I can craft deep slate tiles. Starting with some stairs, slowly working our way up. And making the arch even taller as it goes. Where I think we work from a slope like this to the top. I just have to bring it all the way around. To break up the roof, I'd like to leave a few spots like a big two by two gap right in here. To add in a chimney just to break up the big old tile wall. This is looking pretty good, but it could use some more love. For starters, iron bars across the top points, making the build a tiny bit more gothic. Yep, that's helping a lot. Then these open spaces, we can take some of our andesite high skeletons using droppers to the top of the chimney, then a few sulfire campfires, and that should do it. Of course, with a second on the far side. Now this is starting to look like a mansion. And the inside, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. The spiders and creepers on the mansion. They'll never expect me coming in from the side. Ha! Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, no, no. I'm sorry, Mr. Edmund. We can be friends, I swear. No, I hit the ground. <laughs> oh, almost died to tall grass. Okay, we're fine. I really need to torch this up as I want to get my beacon back. Ooh, no. Just don't look at the shy tall guy in the corner. Nobody knows he's the best Minecraft block picker upper in the world. Moving to the back of the mansion to create my ideal life of luxury. It's time to build some massive gardens, sloping somehow up this way. And I guess I've got a lot more of the mountain to remove. Okay, maybe a little bit of a better idea here. What if I start by building a retaining wall and then I work my way up from there? Yeah, that should be a good first layer. And for this, I just need to get the coarse dirt to this layer for the garden. To work with the shape of the mountain so we're not completely blowing it up. Again, I want to make multiple terraces for the garden layers. Came down to grab a little bit more tough and got some diamonds. Setting up the beacon yet again and clearing out multiple layers for the garden to take shape into the mountainside. Where I think I now have enough materials to build my own mountain. A good way to plan this out is to use some signs. I know, genius, right? A tree over here, a palm pond, a fountain in the wall, a statue on this layer, the tree of Gondor calls for leaves. Now up here, I think I want to start with some cypress trees and I actually have the blocks on me. And that should be a good height for the base. And ooh, ooh traitor, anything? Ooh, rooted dirt, I'll be right back. Emergency emeralds, thank you. Now I can just go through the process of adding leaves in here with some moss and tall grass to give it a little bit more texture. Trees in place, and next up, I want a little bit of a trellis right along the front. A bit inspired by something you might find in like a Mediterranean garden. Hopefully it doesn't block. No, that should be good. A little bit more depth with them, some slabbies, and some glowberries hanging down. And that should do it. To finish the upper section, I added in some peonies. Two small statues, kinda? Mossy carpet for more green, a few small flowers, and some benches out of campfires. This is looking really good up here, but my pickaxe is super dead. Before adding anything more to the garden, I should probably fix it and get some more garden lights in the process. Taking a quick trip out to the end, I've got some skellies to kill. Well, I did that. I have uh, withers to kill. There we go. 
Before installing my new lamps, I want to add in the rest of the details, which starts by moving my shulker mess. Mm, don't tell Pearl. Because right here, we add a pond. Digging down just a touch, I want to grab some dark prismarine to fill in the base. And no, no, maybe dark prismarine for the sides too. Grabbing a little bit of water and a quick trip to the swamp for some lily pads. Well, I should need just a few of them. That should be plenty. With the water in, I want to add a few lily pads around the corners. And maybe a big one right here with a flower for a bubble coral fan. Little walls on the corners. And that'll do. Next, I just need to add a little bit more green to this section. Because it is kind of supposed to be a garden. This is a good start. I think I want to make the actual walking paths a little brighter with some rooted dirt. Yeah, that works a lot better. Trying to make this look extremely manicured, I'm thinking a small tree. That's almost like a little too perfect looking could help a lot beyond that i think taking out this back section of dirt and replacing it with fancy stripy grass using moss and grass blocks will help complete the illusion that this is a really fancy spot to hang out a little workstation over here and i probably need a door so we can have a proper entrance inside including a second door on the upper level as well with a little seating area underneath a canopy of leaves adding a few beacon lamps around the garden building a new fountain into the the walls of the garden to create some depth and adding in a new fancy feature to the mansion with a lodestone here at the center and a few benches around the edge plus a big old birch in the corner from there i removed more of the coarse dirt to replace this with a rooted dirt path around the garden for the other attractions while doing that i kept coming back to this spot and i want to tear it out to build up a little shrine of sorts with something a little like this and now the tree of Whippendor calls for aid, starting with a little bit of a raised platform. Next, I need a little bit of water to fill in around the edges and cover that with mossy cobble slabs, where hopefully I have a little bit of coral to act as some really colorful plants. All to accompany a miniature version of the Giga Tree growing in the mansion garden. Walking up to this, I need a bit more of a wow, which might be possible using some pillars. This is working a little better leading up to the tree. Maybe we'd line with some azaleas. Low lichen on top for lighting. And flowers? Still missing something, but you know what? Candles could look really good here. Oh, and I've got a ton of orange dye. Two, three, and four. That adds a little bit more of a subtle color, and I like that a lot. This dead space over here, I want to turn into another lawn. Striping grass and moss blocks going all the way across. Looking perfectly fancy. Time to clean up the absolute mess of shulker boxes, where I started from a default mountainside. Fancying up the mansion to include this beautiful garden area with multiple water features custom trees and just so much color i need more custom trees specifically at the corner of the front of the mansion using some big plant potters on both sides because it's the best minecraft tree i'd like to use some birch logs this one for now is just gonna go into the side of the wall i guess i'm missing a little space here or wonky and sticking out forwards that should be a pretty good height just need some branches as i work up the courage to tackle the rest of that flat face we'll improve the tree but that'll do for now one more to go There we have it, my Minecraft mansion to live a life of luxury in this hardcore world. This is my 1000th video on my YouTube channel. And I thought I'd do something I have never done before. Something absolutely crazy that no one would ever expect. Something so insane it's unthinkable. I am decorating my hardcore city build to bring on the good vibes. Now I can decorate all day, but they'll still feel empty. So if one catches your eye, leave a comment below with a name for the shop who owns it, and maybe a little story about them. I'll pick out a few, write them in game, hide them in a barrel inside the shop itself for your story to live on in this world. Now leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get rocking. First up here on the mansion, I need a floor. For a base color, I'm thinking we go with some spruce wood. Woo!
Maybe I also need torches. I'm just gonna close the door. With that, I just need to fill in everything else along this place with all of our spruce planks. With that in place, instead of a giant room, I need to grab some dirt. Now planning out the rooms and breaking up the space into something a little more manageable. But for some reason, my brain told me to put the door to the garden up here. We'll figure this out in a sec. As first, I need to get a staircase leading up to the second floor. And for this one, I'm just gonna use some spruce planks as well to get things set in place. Now I know the total amount of space I have to work with, and we can start on the grand hall by fixing up the door. Then oak planks going around it. A little like that for now, I think it's gonna work. Next up, replacing the dirt outline back here with polished granite going all the way around. Afterwards, piling up sand with smooth sandstone going all the way to the top. For the top, I've got a new idea I wanna try. With the base walls in place, I added it in trim around the top so it's something more than bare walls up to the ceiling. Speaking of the ceiling, I want to tear it out to build a grand chandelier or two of them where I can now tear up the floor torches and the floorboards themselves with money mangrove roots and brown carpet to go around. Working in the last few detail bits around the grand hall, including a mosaic at the end for a pop of color and a ton of flower pots around. This first room is now ready to go. Now to access the gardens. I'd like to build a slab staircase going all the way up to this next layer. Around the edge of this, we can just add in a few bits of spruce. I built some simple decorations in this hallway with lots of plant life to easily tell you're entering the garden. Two sections are now finished up. Next, I want to transform this room into a dining room. To contrast the warm colors over here, I want some bluey turquoisey colors for the walls with some warped wood and prismarine brick. walls and ceiling are in place and then from here we can use a little bit of acacia maybe smooth red sandstone and acacia trap doors for the table or maybe i just do this because underneath i think would be really cool to fill it in with skulk a few chairs on either side but not on fire as i want the fireplace to actually be right over here just as a way to keep things warm with this final addition as a centerpiece the dining room is now finished alongside the great hall entrance to the gardens and an extra little back hallway remember this is where we started today without even a floor at the far end of the hallway i'm thinking we transform this into a kitchen starting by tearing out the floor and using an alternating pattern of smooth stone and stone comboing it with the fireplace from the dining room we can build out our own new cooking area right in here campfire hidden underneath smoker right here and we've got ourselves a cooking station for a kitchen we need a lot of counter space storage for food and equipment and even a little herb garden to help produce some spices for cooking to bring the whole atmosphere together when walking in this this instantly feels like a kitchen and I'm super happy with it. Now three rooms left to go on the far side. Step one, walls to divide the rooms up, sandstone to keep it on theme, but I also want to have a fun one in the back with some stripped crimson logs, where we'll have a few meeting rooms back in here and over here, and an office to show the mansion was really transformed into a town hall. Taking a few spruce signs, we can finish the hallway with a simple bench, where I sleep the night, where we wake up with a new conference room. If I could, yes, just get the painting in place. Look at it, it's beautiful, except I would like to change the floor out to some deep slate with a door. Perfect. Getting a nice breath outside inside the villager trading hall cave. I need to get a little bit of redstone here because I've got an idea I want to try. Look at all the work we've done. Yeah, you can see everything. There's a plant in the window. Look at it. Tearing out this wall I just built up. I want to move it over a block and get rid of this one. As I've really enjoyed working with the wallpapers just to make the rooms feel a little different from each other. A little something like this. And with that, we've now filled a little space with another office. I am going to admit something that I I don't want to admit I have a problem and it's right here behind me. All of these shulkers are so unorganized. I don't know how to find anything. Help! But I got a cool new office. Yeah, look at it. Shulkers can't get me in here. If I just keep building, eventually all of the blocks will be placed down and it'll be fixed, right? I think? Or maybe I'm just really hoping. That's a nice little table. First installing a door. And as a final step in here, we need to fix up the ceiling. Where I want to bring some oak slabs going all all the way around like this and then we just raise up the center that should do it except maybe a table here could be nice for the most important part of today's episode i need to build a new field in this hardcore world however i have so many fields and no mills to process the wheat so i don't go insane only building interiors today i want to construct a windmill at each one of these pillars next i need a lot of materials so i first ran over to the birch forest to chop down a bunch of trees for trap doors then to the mangrove swamp for mud stopping at the wheat farm 
farm, then crafting the mud into packed mud. And it's not a flip build without spruce in it. So throwing a lot of stuffs together. And this here should be just about everything we need. Starting with a base of some mud and polished deep slate on top. Next, I'm gonna grab all of this packed mud, some spruce trap doors, fences, terracotta mushroom blocks, campfires, and those. On the inside, I wanna create these little archways just like this. Then in the front, I need a larger entrance to get inside. Perfect. With that, I finished the base of the windmill, adding a lot of mud going all the way up and adding in a few more windows. A big old pillar of spruce up the center, composters around the edge, and adding in an oak plank floor for the second level, along with walls out of oak for three of the sides. The windmill blade's gonna stick out here eventually, but we'll sort it out in a bit. The final side I wanna leave as an opening for a lift with a little something like that. Raising the roof with some deep slate and spruce to make it fit in with the existing builds in the area. Now for the important part, the windmill itself on the front of the building looking fantastic. Last step for now is adding in a little bit of coarse dirt inside for the floor. For now, the first windmill is finished up in the farmland. Just two more windmills to go right down the road over here. Ah! Well, where'd you come from? Sticking with mostly the same build for the next, but trying to make it feel unique, so I added a ladder up to the top from the outside instead of the lift, which now has a super fancy little interior space down below. Up the ladder, we can go to the top with a little bit of a workstation up here for the mill itself. Number one also now has interior space in here too, with an inside ladder leading all the way up. And oh my gosh, look at that, suddenly a third windmill. Oh gosh, how did that get there, huh? We can just assemble the little mill here in the bottom, or piston composter and stairs going around got a little terraforming do here so we can actually now use this lift i am kind of doing an episode on interiors here so i should probably finish decorating this thing One more step after adding in the details to the buildings. This is episode 1000, so I'm being extra. And I wanna bring a stream coming down the mountain through here into our lake. Just a little guy. Carving out a small channel for the water to cascade down the side of the mountain, I added in coarse and rooted dirt along the edge of the stream bed before bringing the water and cascading, of course, down the mountainside. I'm bringing in some flowers, sugarcane, dark oak saplings, and mangrove leaves for greenery along the edge of the stream too, just to make it a little more lush. Next, crafting some spruce fences and getting spruce leaves out of the leaf box. I want to decorate the land with a few smaller trees to help the windmills feel taller sitting on the mountainside. I'm definitely not putting off building interiors, so hey, look, bone meal, we can get even more grass and keep decorating the outside. Yeah, just a little bit more time spent over here. Maybe a touch right back in here. You know, not having tall grass right here behind the windmill, I'd somebody's gonna notice it. So I, I gotta do it, somebody's gonna notice it. And dive. Uh, run out of bone meal. Dang it. Okay, no more distractions. I started today with nearly nothing in front of the city gates. Now we're finally getting somewhere with these brand new windmills. With my wind farm built, we're eco-friendly now, but I also need to be eating friendly and plant a field. Get it? Because it's food. If that joke didn't make you want to subscribe, maybe the fact that I've posted 1,000 videos on YouTube will. Double check that you're subscribed to my channel as YouTube might have unsubscribed you randomly, which would be sad. Over 60% of the people watching right now are not even subscribed. With that out of the way, we now have 27 fields inside this world. With the first floor of the mansion done, I need a break to tackle some of the smaller interiors, like the grocery store next with a basalt floor. Trying to channel my inner trader flip here. The most important thing to sell is candles and succulents. Of course, with some more shelving around the entire space, quite literally farm to table, I need a seed, a few potatoes, and some carrots. For a small produce stand back here, we can just do some carrots potatoes, and then hidden up in the corner, a wheat with a big old tub of blueberries to sell. Back here, I want a big table so we can display some goods like sea pickles, some more produce on display up here, big leafy green plant. I don't know why the grocery store is overgrown, but that's the way it's going. And a register. Lastly, growing all of the produce so it looks nice. The grocery store is now completed, but it's just a front. As I want to go underneath and build a pumpkin and melon farm, starting by digging out a large enough space to contain two of the farms. I've run out of redstone, so I went into the villager trading hall to visit the clerics and trade for some more, then grabbing cobblestone from the quarry and running into the nether for quartz from the piglin bartering farm, all to craft over a stack of observers with an equal number of pistons to match. Next, I need a minecart track running underneath for a hopper minecart with powered rails in the middle to keep it moving and a way to bounce it back at 
at the end. Grabbing some of the dirt we cleared out, a slab in the middle, and we make room for farmland. Now for the important part, pumpkin seeds and melon seeds. I have a pumpkin farm down here, but I have yet to plant a melon field in this entire world. Because who would plant a giant field of melons? They seem kind of useless, right? Off to the jungle I go to find some melons. Melons? Melons? Where are you? Melons? Melons? Oh, melons? Much better. Planting all the seeds in alternating rows and adding in some lights so they grow more efficiently. As I'm definitely going to be down here all the time, I want to add in some lime glass along the front as a way to see inside. First farm is now done. And here goes number two. With two of these farms, I'm gonna need a good amount of storage down here, which means a lot of chests and a bunch of hoppers. Five chests across, going up three tall. I need to run hoppers along the back to be able to unload everything into it and somehow get two minecart unloading systems in here. I think I can squeeze the first one in right here. I think. Okay, it looks like it works. No, it does not work. That should work. It's coming back. And now we're talking. And off goes the second. With the farm done, I set off to detail the area a touch and installed an access point from the grocery store to get into the storage room. Where the grocery store is about 10 times noisier now. But finally, 2,943 days into this world, I have easy access to pumpkins and melons. Just gotta wait for the little guys to grow and this farm's gonna be producing like crazy. Moving next door in the city, working from the stone cobblestone through the deep slate, we can just fill in the rest of the floor with this. From here, I wanna bring the walls all the way down and fill them in just to give ourselves a good amount of space with the floors in i also need a ceiling and dark oak slabs with stripped dark oak logs should do it i should put a torch up here otherwise it's going to be very dangerous this workshop is going to be for building wagons so i want to start with a bunch of storage space back here on some racks a bit like this that we can use for a load of storage using oak trap doors to make it look like we have some extra wheels lying around and when in doubt more barrels and other stuff next building a wagon that looks like it's being repaired or just being constructed right now and i think it'll line up yes we can make it look like it's being held up by the chains a few more tweaks and this here works for the shop get it Okay, moving on to targeting the main street buildings next. I've decided to focus on the first floors as it's really the only thing I can see when I'm walking around down here. Looking in the windows like a creep, I can at least kind of see the grocery store. The second floor, not at all. Here we have the tailor shop that still needs a name. I want to make it warm and inviting on the inside. So here we have mangrovey logs. I want to divide this up in a few smaller rooms with some stripped mangrove logs going up the sides. Just kidding as I think red terracotta instead of strip logs might look a little cleaner. To keep it open air though, we could extend some fences across and trap doors on top. Yeah, that looks a lot better. To walk up to the second floor that I'm never gonna go to, we can install a little staircase. To contrast the warm tones, I wanna add in a big carpet here in the front with cyan, light blue, and cyan kind of bordering it as you come in and a cool copper desk right back here. I wanna have a big old like fitting room back in this point where this is meant to be a mirror. And I need to grab the most useless block in Minecraft to fill it in. Blocks of diamond. Outside of building a beacon, these things are pretty worthless, so we might as well decorate with them. Inside, I want to have a bunch of plants so we can start with some azaleas right over here. Maybe that can set up here too. And I am going to need some light in here, so soul lanterns. They don't give off a huge light level, so we're going to need quite a few of them. Adding in some pearlescent frog lights on the side and moss blocks with azaleas on top, we can create a cool display box where I need some armor stands later, but the front should be more or less ready to go. A little storage under the staircase, and back here can be a bit of a workstation. Chairs for people to sit in, barrels for storage, and a grindstone. Don't know why a tailor would need it, but maybe they do. I should have some smooth stone right here and sticks to craft armor stands. Now, I can't make any cloth-based clothing, but if I visit the Hogland farm here in the nether, I might have leather? No, no, not at all. Absolutely none. Come on, piggy into the pit with you. Hopefully we have some leather ready. Almost enough. We'll make it work. Crafting up a few pieces. We'll see how many I can get out of all of this leather. Oh, perfect. Two whole sets. One out of purple and light blue. Whip has wares if you have coin. But you might want to spend that more at the tavern once we decorate the inside. Starting by boxing in the space by creating a wall for the kitchen and using dark oak for the ceiling. This deep slate leads to a chimney, which means the tavern can have a nice fireplace. 
much better. Next up, a place for people to sit and eat at tables where we can introduce a little bit of warped wood and create some cool little booths. Perfect. And I think on the way to the kitchen, I could squeeze in a few more back here. We got to fill this space as much as we can. So big table in here. This can just be made out of some slabs. We could put like a plate here and a flower pot cup thing there. Next, I have to run over to the farmers, grabbing a few emeralds along the way as all perfect Minecraft tables need a cake. Right there. I added a staircase to the second floor if we want to do anything with it in the future. And then right over here, I want to include a lectern and a sign to make a little welcome station. Well, stair and then signs. Some coat racks and storage barrel. I like barrels, okay? I like barrels. You know what? I'm going to put some more barrels back here and you can't stop me. Oh my gosh, she's switching up with beehives. Ah! Just kidding. Barrels. For the chef to work their magic, let's put a campfire down here and two smokers on top. Finally, a light in the corner and a few herbs on display and then a cake being ready to go out. Now it's kind of bare as we walk inside. So I've got to find something to do in here, but it's really skinny hallway. So maybe some paintings, but also got to set the vibe. Maybe like a cool little carpet as you walk in. Can we make one of those fun stations where a lot of people's just artwork is on display for sale. Yeah, that's kind of fun. With the first four of the tavern completed, next up is something a bit different. I want to focus on detailing the stables over here for the rest of the good animals to have a home in the city. Starting by first removing all of these little end bits to where we can add some bigger dividers with our spruce and then making it so the animals can't just walk out the side. We can do a few slabs on top and then just fences back here with some trap doors above. Yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. And I would like a way to get up to that second floor if we do want to use it in the future. So I'm thinking right about here, we just take some stairs up. Then we can do something a little fun with right there underneath. And maybe this corner, because it's a little cramped, is just some storage. The actual stalls for animals, I want to add in some jungle doors so that they can see through. So it doesn't feel like a quiet little box of <laughs> happy thoughts. Happy thoughts, not a dark little box of sorrows. Whoever's staying in this one will forever be hungry as we can put some hay bales down here here. Then on this side, I think it's almost like a tack room with some extra storage. That I think is going to work out pretty well. Ground torches, not acceptable. I love lamp too much. Then it looks like I never finished carrying that detail along the edge so we can bring in a little bit more of these. And I think I might strip these down as it's a little too dark. You know what? I like that. That looks pretty good. We'll get animals out here soon. But first, this back area needs some love. I really need to get a well inside the city or some form of water. I keep having to walk all the way out here but it does look pretty good coming back inside now in the back i'd like to create a water trough so we can also show the animals some more love perfect then we can kind of divide this a little, little bit in case we have extra animals that need to stay outside there's a little bit of a dividing wall here now now as we all know animals tend to be a little stinky so over here i'd like a place to store manure to represent this i got muddy mangrove roots and so soil which we can clear out all of this oh there's the farm i just built this should work with maybe a little fungusy something growing on it. We'll just move on to over here where I want to have some warp roots and then maybe some of these guys just dotted around like some stuff is kind of growing back here. But overall, the stables is pretty ready to go. Next up, I'm going to need a few leads as there's this wandering trader llama up on the hill that I really want to bring with me into the stables. He's been here for a long time. Oh, he has a friend. I feel like it actually makes a lot of sense to have wandering trader llamas inside the city stable that's designed for people to just stay over for a little while. Please don't die. Please don't die on the berries. Please don't die. You're professionals. Look at you. You must travel a lot. Nope, you're dying on the berries. You're not supposed to do that. I need name ideas for these llamas down in the comments below. And I think it makes sense if they're a pair. Once again, back into the villager trading hall we go. I need golden carrots. One for a snack. Two for a visit to breed a new mule. Come with me, little guy. There we go. I really should make a lot easier pathway to get over to the city for my starter base. I have to walk all the way down the mountain and back up. On top of the mule, I've decided I want to obtain all of the rideable mobs inside of Minecraft. Checking the box on the mule here. Next up, we need a horse. We need a donkey and we need a skeleton horse, which requires a thunderstorm. Let's focus on the easy ones and see if a uh, thunderstorm wants to roll in. Oh, here's some horses. Perfect. Horse of the mountain. I need you to come with me. Oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't come with me. Don't come with me. Not this way. Not, it's not smart. Oh. 
You're a professional. You live in the mountain. You know what you're doing. There we go. The horse is now acquired as well. I think to make this a lot easier, I'm going to need to find some saddles. And the end rating loot barrel supplies. Oh, it started raining. Is this... Uh, I don't think it's a thunderstorm. Okay, let's focus on finding a donkey to bring home. I've also just now realized I also need to bring a pig home because technically you can put a saddle on a pig, which I might have an extra pig hanging out back in here. Yes, there he is. Look at him. Come with me, my porky friend. Ham sandwich has been brought home, and I think the perfect place for him is going to be to hang out here, just kind of attached to this. Back to finding the donkey. Target acquired. Donkey, you have been located. I'm here to save you. Okay, we've got our donkey. Give him a saddle, and we ride on back to the city. Only one mob remains at this point that I want to bring back here. Let's throw this guy in a stall, and we can just lock him in. But I need the skeleton horse. Another one that I could bring back would be a strider, but I do feel kind of mean bringing him here with no lava and i'm not putting lava in the city quite yet there hasn't been a thunderstorm for quite a while in this world so i'm hopeful one's gonna happen somewhat soon and i think this is a really good spot to hopefully get some skeleton or spawns i will just wait until we have a thunderstorm Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that thunderstorm? It's here. Oh, it's finally here. I think I just need to start fighting things and then maybe we'll get something. I think I'm gonna need my chest piece for this one. There hasn't been a thunder strike in... Oh, speak of the devil. There it is. There it is. We have one. I have to get really close here. He's gonna explode. No, 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 no. We can't kill the horses. Okay, we got one. We got one. We got one. Nope, we killed the horse. We specifically killed the horse. We have three horses. Yes, 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 yes. I need to go sleep instantly. This is the first time I've ever had skeleton horses in a Minecraft world. Oh, they're so cool. Hello, my new friends. Oh, they're already tamed. That's amazing. Look at him. Just don't look at the arrows in my face. The battle is over and welcome to your new home, my skeleton friend. I believe the snow Nope, that's the baby mule. It's been a while since I've been here. I thought he would have grown. Piggy's over here. You can hang out here with him. I swear, it's great. You're gonna love it. Your other two skeleton horse friends that survived the battle, I'm just gonna let them roam free. And if you have any ideas on what we can do with the other skeleton horses, let me know. All of the interiors on Main Street are now finished up, except the villager cart storage area, which will come later. As I'm ready to finish off the mansion interior. Starting by walking up the stairs to the second floor where we have nothing. To make it a little bit of a safer place to work so we don't fall down in the middle i should probably put a little railing a little stripping later and that should do it next i'm gonna need some terracotta and a little bit of cactus oh i already smelted some yay all to craft cyan terracotta from here i'm gonna need some warp wood from the lumber mill but I'm all out. That's a problem, which can be solved by a quick trip into the nether to find ourselves a warped forest somewhere in this mess. Yoink. Perfect. Here we go. This tree should be enough. Yep. That should be plenty. How to find my way out of here. Ah, the perimeter. Perfect. With all the warp goodies squared away, I'm going to tap into the wither rose supply here for some black dye for a quick trip to the guardian farm. And there was plenty here and no shards. All right. A quick AFK session at the guardian farm later. Taking the prismarine shards, we can craft dark prismarine. One final step for the walls. I need to take all of this concrete powder and turn it into concrete. All of these materials are going into the walls and ceilings inside of the mansion for the second floor central room, some storage closets, and most importantly, my bedroom. The main room in here is looking great. We've still got that half left to go, but over here inside of my bedroom, which is very massive, I thought we could instead use some mangrove planks for the roof. It might be busy. I was going to say it might be easier to build from up top, but I don't know. Let's just go the old fashioned way. Ah, much better these larger gaps i'm thinking we just use mangrove logs and strip them down make it safer up here let's throw in some torches too and you know what i might do that inside of here as well this will give it a little bit more texture and help it feel a, i think a touch more completed this is starting to feel a little bit more like a bedroom in here just a few places that still need to get patched in a closet with a mud floor a bedroom with a stripped mangrove floor and a back office with an acacia floor we can move to the other side where i've kind of started planning things out with the main car carpet here in the center, then two rooms on either side. I'm thinking a display case here at the end. On top of the copper, we can bring in acacia planks and then stacking up logs going all the way up with the border of some more planks on top. 
Of course, stripping the logs all the way down. There's not much space here in the hallway, so I'm thinking we just extend some dripstone blocks all the way back. Oak trap doors going back down, so it's just not quite as flat with some soul lanterns to light it up. For the left room, I want to take some jungle slabs in here and trap doors to connect across. Above the jungle, though, I think some pink terracotta could be kind of a fun color to incorporate. Now, for the end room over here, I want to take some oak slabs and just work them up to the top. But you know what? What if we just flatten it across here? Then I don't have to add any more copper. Just like that, we now have an extra room, which might need a torch for now. In here, I want to create some display cases that will fill out shortly with massive armor stands. But for a fun floor, I thought the warp nylium I gathered up when I was getting the logs earlier could be kind of fun. We'll get frog lights in here soon for the base of these cases, but for now, we can throw in dark oak trap doors. This room, I want to turn into a bit of a kid's room, just like this. Now, across the hallway, I want to dedicate this room to the number 1,000, as this is my 1,000th video on YouTube, mostly because I wasn't really sure what else to put in here, so this will have to do. A big 1,000. A few final touches in here with a little bit of greenery and some storage. Moss blocks in here with some azaleas on top. Maybe the one in the window is a big old bushy guy. And trapdoors to frame them in. And I can just sit in this chair and stare at the big old 1000. Greenery is a big aspect of my builds and my life IRL, so I want to add a ton of plants throughout this second floor. Really quickly, coming back to the 1000 room, I want to try putting a giant painting up here. Like that. <laughs> I love it. Oh, the pig face is perfect. Now, moving on to some weirder details, this room is kind of about flexing. So I wanted to put a few things on display, like a beacon and some wither skeleton skulls. I only have one extra beacon right now, so eventually I'll get a second in here. And these are all gonna be armor sets on armor stands with a netherite one in the middle. But before we get to that grind, let's finish out this central area. Like some lily of the valleys and randomly a skull shrieker. This is about showing my conquest. So we could put a second here with a little table thingy and a crystal. Ooh, this room is starting to come together. An additional thing is maybe we do some benches with the light blue bed and a second right here. Now for the little supply closet in here, we could put beehives, barrels, barrels, maybe a chest, extra flower pot, and that should do it. We're not really gonna go in there that often. Now a very important detail, however, sea pickle and another wither skelly skull. Inside of my bedroom, I've been kind of working on a four poster bed as I've went along and I think I finally got an idea. We can use some more of our dark oak slabs and bring them all the way across like this, kind of giving it its own roof. Then connect the lower part with some trap doors. And because I have them light blue beds in the middle, this little corner over here is kind of going to represent enchanting. So I want an enchanting table in there. But first we can finish off this with some barrels, maybe some more right there. And up top, I'm thinking we just do four solo chests. This is trying to be my closet. And since there's no roof in it, I've got dark oak slabs at the ready. This deep slate leads up to the main chimney for this side of the house. So let's just connect ourselves in here and have it look like it's going through the floor. Maybe more like that. Because the kitchen is right below us. So it does need a way for that smoke to get up. This little room back here, we can throw a jungle door in and I like that. And then some barrels along there. And I think just some chests up top. And there's again, no roof. I do have oak slabs and I do have roof. Now for some of the finer details where I'm going to need a lot of sticks for five armor stands. When destroying the village, underneath us, I did loot a book that's just been sitting in the shulker, so I've got a great use for it. It's time to dive into a lot of these diamonds and a little netherite, as I'm gonna need two new diamond swords and five sets of diamond armor and a new enchanting table. But this is gonna get real expensive, especially as for the full flex, I wanna take one of them and turn it into a set of netherite armor with two swords for some reason. This is my super fancy mansion after all, so it's gotta live up to the part. Quick stop in the bedroom to drop off the enchanting table and a spare ender chest in my office. Armor stands at the ready. Netherite here in the center. But I'm thinking we take the two swords and point them right back in the middle. Nope, not my totem. I would like that, please. There we go. Now the diamond armor can go right here, but I'll be honest, just another set of diamond there in the corner sounds kind of weird to me. So unfortunately, these two chess pieces are gonna go to waste. Tying the mansion back into the rest of the things I've accomplished in this world, I think a set of gold armor on both sides helps tie that in, kind of showing the crazy gold farm that we have here too, but everything leads up into the netherite in the middle. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, anytime I walk down the hallway or just around, I can just see the netherite armor at the end. Ooh, that's looking good. One final treat for those of you that have stuck through this interior building extravaganza. I reward you with another interior. The blacksmith is no longer a mess of dirt behind mangrove trapdoors. And instead, we have a double smith inside that is in need of a great story from the comments. I have spent the entire last month building a custom biome in Minecraft. At the start of the series, this land was basically a place to chop trees. Then I transformed it into a custom birch forest. Today is phase three. Live streaming the entire process, showing everything that happened. I'm bringing together two massive projects, and this has taken well over 200 days in game to complete. So be sure to leave a like and double check that you're subscribed as we rewind the clock to tell the story of how I built this. But first, we must add some lore to this world. Last episode, I built interiors in my hardcore city, asking for people to leave comments with stories for each of the shop fronts I have so far. I'm adding in some of my favorites as Easter eggs throughout the city as written books inside of each of them. That sign is looking much better. But of course, I've got some llamas to name in here too. Terry and Terry. Previously, I spent 24 hours building in this world and completed this monolith, but the waterfall coming off of it just randomly ended. So the first step on this project is to extend the dirt and fill in some of the flatter areas for the water to more naturally come down the mountain and reach the river eventually below. With the outline done, I created space for pools for the water to gather before it moves on. Then jump down to the main river. I want to finish both endpoints, then figure out how to link them together as it makes more sense in my brain. So I cleared out a large area at the end of the river to allow for the water to flow through more easily. With that complete, I went back up to the whale to bring the water down to the plains level where I had already built some custom trees, so I want to make these work in with the terrain. By building up the bank of dirt so the water flowing through seems more natural with a bit of a riverbed edge on both sides of it. My idea was working well, so I flew through extending multiple routes for the water to reach the river as I do want the small waterways, creeks, streams, or whatever they're supposed to be called sunk into the terrain so I took a shulker of dirt around and stacked up the plains biome by one or two more blocks to keep it smoothed out across the entire thing and have the river make sense. Then filling in the ravine that split the landscape as it felt pretty out of place for what I wanted. I was brutally attacked by some stormtrooper llamas after their leader somehow disappeared. I'm not quite too sure what happened to him, but these llamas rolled a one on accuracy, so I was pretty safe. I survived the attack and spent the next few hours texturing the riverbeds with dirt and some large boulders to help explain why the waterway split and diverted along the course. It's still pretty bare, but uh, so far I was really happy with the progress on this. Diving into the detail phase, we're getting right into the fun here. The boulders might have been nice, but they need some extra texture variation to match the monolith. As a first step, I went around adding in light gray wool and concrete powder to them. Then for some of the overhangs, I added in a bit of the acacia log for an artificial shadow. Now, plains biomes are pretty bare, so I want to add in subtle details where I can, like tearing up some of the grassy blocks to add in moss for this slight difference in color. Linking this to build elements already in my world, I went into the nether portal cave to the nether root farm and bone mealed the warp side to get a ton of warp roots and sprouts which need shears to gather, of course. Adding those around the biome as grass to get the bluey turquoise color for even more of that green variety. Once again, gathering materials, I need a lot of string to prevent sugarcane and other things from growing, which led me down into the old spider spawner. But before that, I took some seagrass and added that into the riverbed to hide my inability to texture underwater. But now we can run through and just bring in a few carrots and a few beetroot throughout the edges. I hate this game. You don't plant beetroot. You need beetroot seeds. Beetroot crisis over. I grabbed wheat seeds instead and started adding those in along the riverbank. Then started with some sugarcane azalea bushes to create a lush riverbank at the top as well. But this needs a lot more variety along the riverbank. So I added in a bunch of items. The total list came through at patches of lilac, some dark oak saplings along the water. We have tall grass, sugarcane, and small drip leaf in the water itself for the flatter sections. Then for some larger bushes, I brought in oak leaves along the edge of the main river before spamming them along the upper creeks as well with some small flower patches and tall grass over the entire plains biome which has led us here a completed riverbed and details along the entire biome and it's looking amazing now not stopping there i need a border for this biome or it just looks kind of gross so i started to plan out where some custom trees will be built later on and planning out a road that will extend beyond the biome to a future village transformation project that i'm really looking forward to but 
but I need to assemble more custom tree stumps along the back edge of this project to fully encapsulate and surround the biome I'm building. Now here's my pro creator move. I added stream chat and forgot to hide it from recording. So if you see your name, let me know in the comments. But on day four of the project IRL, I wanted to frame out all of the beautiful custom birch trees with branches using birch wood and diorite walls for smaller branches at the end. A quick shout out to Marcos editing the video right now because he gifted me this Mandalorian head Lego over the holidays, but I do need birch leaves to finish the trees. So I flew out to where I've been clearing a birch forest along the ocean for a potential town build. But before I get carried away on another future plan, I need to fill an entire shulker box of leaves for my current custom trees. I'm using the same tree design from episode 17, where I spent a few hours adding in the leaves to the birch trees before adding in some custom oak trees with andesite walls or a trunk, then acacia leaf trees with oak fences as a trunk. But so far, I gotta say, I am in love with this transformation. Day five, RL rolled around, which led to more of the same thing. This is a really big project and I had run out of birch leaves again, so I'm back at it again, clearing out the forest to build my own custom forest that hopefully is gonna be better. Today, I'm focusing on framing out the entire back section of the forest, building out as many of the trunks of the trees as I possibly can to just so I can see how many leaves I'm going to need for this project. And better, how many trees I actually need to build. The stumps I had placed previously were for a general idea, but they weren't set in stone, allowing me to remove them if it felt too crowded. As this is meant to be a more open space as a forest edge biome, but more deadly llamas did show up. Safe from the llama spit, I finished building out the trunks of the trees on the back half, trying again to leave extra space between the trees so it wasn't quite as dense as the main forest. The tree trunks are all in place, but they are naked, which means it's time to leaf them. These had already taken a ton of time today to build, so I focused on the one at the front for now. Random chat window has been fixed, and I realized I've built all these trees and never really showed you all how to make them. If you are a fellow birch tree enjoyer, check out my second channel, Flip2, for a quick Quick tutorial on how to build this one link in the description but now suddenly a tree wow look at that huh huh it barks like a tree get it it's bark on a tree okay you know what? i got a lot more to build i should move on i don't think anybody really likes my jokes but it's it's fine i'm gonna keep telling them because i like them here we are swooping once again because your boy needs more birch leaves At this point in time, birch leaves are now my eighth most mind block in this world, as well as my ninth most place block. But those are rookie numbers. I gotta pump up those numbers. Yesterday was all about building the trunks. Today is all about finishing the trees and covering them with leaves to get the full atmosphere. Flying like a leaf in the wind, I made some of the best birch trees ever seen in Minecraft. It's already the best tree, but somehow we've made it even better here. The forest was feeling very full as much as I like the trees. I don't want it to be super dense. So I tore down a few of the trees to leave it and make it a bit more open. Now chat constantly asked me to build a lightning struck tree. So I had to oblige by tearing down one slightly and stripping all the logs, then bringing some stripped oak in for a darker variation and a few mangrove roots for like burned branches. But adding in a branch at the bottom that's still alive just for funsies. But the final birch trees grew back their leaves to finish off the border of this biome. This is looking super magical at this point in time. And one thing I wanna do before we continue is actually tearing out these few trees that are at the front of the biome because they're really interrupting the view. I also don't wanna interrupt the view of the monolith itself. So we've got a few more to move. Maybe we build a patch of the small trees right back in here. So they kind of all belong together. And there's a weird gap coming through right here where you just see into nothingness. I've got one plan, so maybe we do two more. One extra little detail I did add in is a small footbridge to actually get into the middle of this biome instead of having to walk through the water. This project is getting into the final stages where all of the different elements are finally coming together to create something really special. Once more, back in the resource gathering phase, I jumped into the nether to pick up gravel from the piglin bartering stations. Along with a shulker box of dirt, I started to fill in the cave entrances around the middle of the biome before moving on to create a pond. There was so much green around that I wanted that little splash of blue in the middle of the plains since the creeks were on the far side. Of course, I needed details on the pond, so it did remain a focal point of the biome as you're walking by. So I added some mud around the edge and then dotted in a few other foliage bits and some flowers around the entire thing.
To make this something I will actually see and walk by in my Minecraft world, I extended the road out of the forest to link into the village on the far side. Hello? He gave me a potato. Unfortunately, a potato was not the solution to all of my problems as much as I want it to be. So I'm back at the lumber mill to craft up oak fences and then grabbing some andesite from the quarry to make andesite walls. I'm thinking first up here, we start with these little trees like the llama one so that we can just kind of fill them in, see what's going to happen and tackle it from there. Can I make it? No. 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 I admit defeat. I admit defeat. Okay. <laughs> Now I love this skinny tree design, so I'm adding a few pockets of them throughout the entire region. But to add more interest in, I'm introducing a third tree type already in my world. The oak leaf green is helping to add some contrast to the forest bit with a little bit of height variation as these are slightly shorter than the birch trees. But I am trying to bring them up the hill on the side to use all of the height available around me. After that, I had an idea to jump to the back side of the biome to build a few more of these oak trees sticking out of the edge, leaving a lot of space in between from the other trees to kind of dither out the edge of the forest a little bit further and really reinforce that edge bit. Where I'm very happy to say this finished the entire tree phase of this project. It's time to finish up the central plain slash meadow area of this project by first smoothing out the dirt and filling in a lot of the weird Minecraft holes along Along the landscape that we all love so very much. I am giving this the same treatment as the creek section of the build, so I also want to add in a little moss to help with the texture of the grassy areas and add some contrast in there. In the final detail phase, things can be a bit repetitive as I've already figured out the formulae, it's just time to grind and get it done. Placing in all of the bushes, flowers, and warp bits throughout this entire new section. Before deciding, uh, it was too flat, so I brought it up even further with another 10 stacks of dirt. It was about here that I realized I passed the three 3,000 days survived in hardcore Minecraft, and yeah, I, I missed it. I completely blew past it. We're now on day 3,013. Still unaware, for a small detail, I built a bridge over the creek for people to use and decided a simple path out of it with some coarse dirt would look pretty nice. Finally, I grabbed some bone meal and running around to add in tall grass for the goodness on top of it all. With a few fences along the pass with a little lantern to make it a touch safer and adding in glow lichen and the occasional jungle slab as a mushroom on the side of the tree, Exiting the main part of the birch forest here, I can say this is finally complete. Every detail element I wanted inside of this custom biome is now finished. Look at the little creek over here. It's absolutely beautiful. We got the pathway leading all the way out to our future village transformation and flying around and looking at this entire place is just so special. I am absolutely in love with this project. Taking a look at where we started with the gross plains biome and the monolith on its own, I'm super happy to say that a month later, this is looking so much better after all of the work we put in to create a full and environment finally it looks like this actually belongs in the world now but to put a cherry on top or should i say a beetroot on top it's time to plant a field first i need beetroot where do i have a ah there we go if you've watched till now i have a very important question for you i need you to answer in the comments have you subscribed if the answer is no please subscribe if the answer is yes please tell me your favorite minecraft block in the comments but here we have the 28th field added into this hardcore minecraft world Some I have decorative netherite armor kits, but over here, I still have a diamond hoe. Before we do anything else, I have to fix this right now. One netherite ingot plus a diamond hoe gives us a netherite hoe. The grand piece of this biome we built is the monolith. But as we get a little bit closer, you can pretty obviously tell that there's no interior and it's just a beacon, which leads to the whole place feeling a little artificial. So I'm thinking first and foremost, we kill the skeleton. Yep, nailed it. And two, we get rid of the clicking that's killing me ah oh, much better to help out the floor i'm thinking we surround this entire thing with some deep slate bricks this way i can kind of jump on top and i think we can also extend the platform another three blocks with the glass so we don't just see through into that mess i'm thinking we take some skulk and fill this in underneath all of our glass blocks so that we can create a cool artificial floor extending a small platform up here i'm thinking we take in front of these frog lights we do a soul sand right there and a brick right here surrounding these i want to create water elevators that go up to the entrance this way i don't need a giant platform coming all the way down here all the way up here at the top i'm thinking this side we drop on down to keep the water locked in we can take two trap doors with a water bucket over here and on top of these we can add in light blue glass going all the way up 
get the water elevator working, I do need a little bit of kelp. Where I should have some... Yes, perfect. When in doubt, the storage mess out shall provide. Throwing the water here in the top. We can meet it at the bottom with a little kelp going all the way back up. Breaking the kelp and up we go creating a cave feeling out of the deep slate on the inside i want this to feel dark and kind of tucked away so you don't really notice it from far away and i think we're kind of getting that well it still looks a little reinforced here with the walls in place but overall pretty good one last detail to fly all the way around and back inside i need to get up and down i'd like to hide a spore blossom back here so it feels a little magical when you're getting near it too hopefully those particles are going to be appearing yes yes we're getting a little bit of them perfect there we go that is looking much, much better. Now we can jump all the way down to uh, this. Yep, this this is what we're jumping down to now. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Well, now it's time for the Minecraft Builder's Curse of never being able to actually finish a project. As I've got a new idea to add here. I need a little cobble, mossy cobble, moss cobble slabs, some stone. The base of the forest around here just feels a little flat and empty. So going around it and adding in a few boulders, I think is going to make it feel a little nicer. The nature around here is looking absolutely fantastic, but this world is lived in. And I thought adding a little farmhouse out here could be a great way to add to the environment. Going off of the base style that we've done everywhere else inside this world, something I know that works is really simple and just completes it. Breaking away from the mold, we can add a little front door right here. Then for the walls, I'm thinking just bringing in a ton of cobblestone. But I also do have mossy cobble, so maybe we can use that to replace some of these and make it feel very weathered out here in the forest. Poking in a window right over here and maybe another out the back on this side. Showing we're walking around this area a little bit, I added a little bit of rooted dirt and then maybe here we do a little campfire. Since it's a pretty basic farmhouse on the inside, we can just add in a bunch of coarse dirt for the floor, toss the door in place and extend some spruce stairs out for a front awning which is gonna connect into the main roof line throughout here that will also probably be spruce. It's been a little while since building in this style, but it is really nice coming back to something that I know and seeing if I can do it in a better way. For the roof itself, we can bring in a few deep slate tile stairs going all the way across. Leaving space for a chimney in here using the last little bit of cobblestone I have. Some walls up here. Then I do have a soul campfire that we can throw on top. Here at the end with these slabs, I'm thinking we just bring them in a touch and trap doors across the rest of it. This is looking pretty good for the house so far. With the house completed over here, we really need to situate it into the environment. Something a little hedge right along here. Then over on this side, we can extend it down with a small workstation, like covered station of sorts. A little more like this. This, where we have a bench over here, clearing out the floor underneath, and I think we just fill it with some rooted dirt and a lot more stuff in here. Okay, that's looking much better for the house, but over here is very flat and open, where I think this could be perfect for a small storage shed. About this size, and then from here we connect everything up with some spruce... Blah, that red spruce... No, spruce stair, right there. Yeah, I think this can work. We just need a little roof. Where I think some spruce slabs just carried all the way up to the top will be the perfect solution. A little tip on top here, I did add in some spruce stairs to help it be a little bit more consistent going across. A little coarse dirt down here at the base. And I'm thinking from this point, we just keep adding in the extra details of storage goodies all over. Maybe a little table right here for some working. And it's getting dark, so I need a lantern. Yep, this is helping a lot for the area to feel just a little bit more lived in. I really like the hedge over there, so maybe we can use that here to help kind of block off this side entrance. The far side's just gonna be blocked off by stuff. And maybe a few extra leaves on the outside because the back looks a little weird. I love the idea of them having a little garden patch, so maybe we can throw a few of the alliums over here. And just a few of them here on top of this section too. One of these days, I'm really gonna have to make a sweet berry farm as I use them a lot to decorate, but I just never have any. Some final touches for the build style is just adding in the foliage throughout. We got glow berries, glow lichen, sweet berries along the back. It's funny what was a necessity when I started out this world to keep myself safe, like using glow berries as a light source and glow lichen for that. And the sweet berries to stop the mobs from coming in is now just purely for decoration. And it, it just has to be here. It's like the soul of the world at this point. Now this is feeling 
feeling much more like home. With a disgusting mess of a shulker box mess to go along with it. Ugh. Transforming villages in Minecraft is literally my favorite thing to do. And if I don't do it at least three times a year, I'll go insane. If that doesn't happen from dealing with these dudes, excuse you, it'll also make me go insane, but that's fine. Now, please be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new as we dive into a new adventure transforming this village. Step one of this project, I need... Oh, I'm in the water. Take two. Step one of the project here, I need tulips. That definitely wasn't the first time at all that I made it across the bridge. I already have a flower farm over here that produces alien and azure bluettes just by doing this to get all the tulip variants as well i need to clear out all of the trees and the flower forest to make space for more farms that forest was a lot bigger than i expected but hey at least i got logs now the idea is to surround the entire village with huge colorful fields of tulips but first i need a lot of flowers which the wither skelly farm can help out with as i've got tons of bones This should be plenty. You're doing great, dogs. You're doing great. Every time I bone meal the ground, there's a chance of getting a flower. If you didn't know, when you bone meal the same spot, it'll always spawn the same ah, flower. Ah, right there. It did it. Which means it looks like right over here, we're always going to be getting red tulips. I just need to find where the other three types of tulips are going to spawn. But I think I'm going to want to get rid of all the other types of flowers first. Looks like up here, I can get pink tulips in almost every one of these spots. Over here, we can get white tulips and orange looks like orange flowers also spawn up here which i might use instead at each of these locations i want to build a little farmhouse to hide our flower farm that way we can decorate the land as well but you know before we added a massive flower field after we're tearing up the massive field of flowers just gotta trust the process on this one for these marco farms i first need to build a box around where i want the flowers to spawn it at the ends of each of these boxes i need to add in pistons on both sides give a little bit more space on one of them observer looking forward with a note block dust behind repeated on the far side now this should break everything perfect stop stop please stop thank you thank you thank you for stopping now right here in the middle observer looks at the top then this way at the old observer with a dispenser looking up at the grass Fill him with some bone meal and we should have flower farm very loud very loud flower farm oh my gosh seed farm but flowers mm. to make it a little bit easier i'm gonna bring some hoppers over here with a barrel out of the side now i can just fill this with bone meal and it should go all the way in repeating this process three more times we now have a working flower farm for each type of tulip in minecraft now these are all pretty ugly currently so i think i want to build a small farmhouse around each of them to hide it looks like i am out of cobble deep slate here to build with so time to mine This should do it. These are going to end up being pretty big here, where I already need to make it one block bigger. For an extra trim along the base, let's bring our tough blocks up another block. Near the barrel, maybe it juts out a bit right here. For a small entryway and access to the barrel. Then over here, we just extend the rest of the walls up using our cobble. Along the front, I think I can get away with a few slabs inching their way up. As we come in, we can make a little lip going up too, so that the front door is actually walkable. I think that can work. A few windows in to really help this house feel come alive. For the main trim, though, I do want to outline it with spruce before we bring in that deep slate. Now, behind these, though, I want to try adding in a few mushroom blocks, except hiding this texture for something like this, which can come all the way across with the spruce slabs down the middle and repeating the entire process on the far side. The back is really long and flat right now, though, but I've got a few friends right now. Okay, I feel better. Along the back, I want to take in a bunch of deep slate tiles to create a small fireplace place back here that'll stick out with a chimney which shouldn't stick up too far but maybe right about here surrounding the campfire with some trap doors and a slab on top for safety perfect to keep it pretty simple on the front i just want to add a little core straight out the door which will be oak and a little deep slate on the inside for a floor back up top to use the deep slate i literally just mined we can bring in stairs some full blocks then slabs for the upper part
This is looking pretty good, but it definitely will be spawning mobs everywhere. So on the inside to make it a little safer, it's a working space. It doesn't have to be gorgeous in here. Okay, but even saying that, even I can only allow it to be so bad. Okay, that, that's much more doable. The perfect red tulip flower farm is ready to go. Just don't look at it for too long, okay? Moving on. With the red tulip farm complete, I worked on the remaining flower farms, trying to make them a little unique from each other as I go. Hold on a minute here. Before I finish building this last one, I want to try something. I'll at least get this finished first. Right now, it's really hard to tell which building represents which flower. So I'd like to grab a few flowers in here. Grabbing eight of each, I can turn them all into dye. Why white tulip gives light gray dye? I don't know. Please excuse the mess, but somewhere in here, I think I have some terracotta. Perfect. Using the dyes, we can craft a stack of each of the types of terracotta. And I want to try replacing all the cobblestone on the front side of each of them with the matching color of terracotta, which gives us a little something like that that I think I like. Maybe here we just go full red. That's going to do. In here, I have the orange tulips. Orange terracotta is in place. Up here, we have the pink, which is now in place, and a little window. I haven't finished building this one yet, but I'm really trying to break away from the shape by having this lower droop down section in here because the others, they're so long. I can't handle it. I really don't like them, but we're going to live with it for now, and I might go back and change them later, but at least we're going to keep moving forward. I'm not stressed about it. No, no, not at all. All of the houses in here are looking really good at this point in time, but I definitely have a little bit more cleanup work I want to do and some extra details. Like maybe over here, we have a stack of logs just showing somebody's living in the space. And then maybe we do a little chest there. My next goal is connecting all these via some roads and pathways that will get sorted in a moment. But at least with this, we can add a little life back here. With the four flower farms assembled and housed, I want to link them up with roads. I'm yet again asking for your piggy support in my campaign to create brand new roads and I need gravel no no yes nope 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 yes this right here should definitely keep me busy for a while before i get to the roads i want to place down some dirt to smooth out the terrain around here a bit further we're not gonna need these stinking villager pathways so i can bring in my own new pathways imagine making a path out of actual path blocks i could never nor will i ever stay up through a night crafting a ton of coarse dirt and a few spruce slabs for walkability we can get to work tearing out all of the grass blocks to make space for our brand new road for now the path it's just going to disappear off into the distance. But in our little village, it does connect to every single one of the homes. But now I just need to run throughout here and add in all of the coarse dirt that I just crafted. It's amazing how a few pieces of different colored dirt can really just change the atmosphere of an entire place. This is looking so much better now, especially when we add in a little garden. Yep. That is looking pretty good. That says a little O to the flower farm back here that for now, um, it's just gonna stay like that because I don't know what to do with it. If you have ideas, let me know. Farms are now set up. The core export of our village is ready to go, which now this needs some love. Do I even wanna ask why you all are in the animal pen? Come on out. There you go. There's a whole world to explore. Oh, okay. Come out when you're ready. It's okay. Take your time. Okay, that's the answer. That's the answer right there. As with all terraforming projects, I need my comfort beacon nearby to keep me safe. And crafting five new shulkers to fill with stuff. You see where I might have a bit of a problem. As this is going to go a long way, as I need to carve out space for these rivers to connect, which results in a ton of block breaking. To get a better idea of all of this and how it's going to flow, I left it all one block below water level so I could easily add in the water on top. Some areas needed a little bit more love so i pushed back a few of the hills to further expand the river cutting back even more of them in a few different spots i wanted to smooth out the terrain for future field building and give a more natural look to the river now a few village houses might have been in the way of the river so i tore those down to rebuild them later on i, I promise but first the river kind of sucks as it isn't full of water so i'm fixing that problem one bucket at a time we're a little low on shulker box storage space so let's spend a little time here filling in everything inside first so that we can clear out space before we get into digging. With the base shapes done, I dug out the river to be roughly three to five blocks deep, just kind of varying across. Drop everything. Emergency emeralds. Where are my emergency emeralds? Please? Where are my emergency emeralds? No! We have to go get more. You stay right there. We need more! I always have a stack of emeralds in the under chest. Where did it go? Yes, he's still here. Oh, drip leaf. Thank you very much, buddy. We got 10. Oh, that's so good. Thank you. You're the best. With that beautiful discovery, I moved on to creating some mossy rocks under the river to break the consistency of all of the dirt so far. Now for one final step, 
step underwater, I wanted to add in some seagrass to make it not feel so bare as you're kind of looking at it. The watering traders are gathering and it seems to be worth it so far. I really like it. Next up, we've got to fix the above water portions of the river and maybe a bridge. We probably need a bridge. A quick jump back to look at where we started today, now with a full connection on the rivers. But I want to take this one step further. And I'm really glad I got all that gravel earlier today as I want to start removing the edge of the rivers where we would have some residue depositing and filling it back in with the gravel. Oh, this is kind of nice. The sand's already here where I want to fill it in. So we'll just change it out. And I should probably do this underwater too, or that's going to look a little weird. A few extra plots of gravel are now in place, and this is looking a lot better. Before I do anything else, I need to clear some space in these shulker boxes. So let's grab some grass. Excuse me, sir. I need that bed. I want to create a small riverbank area. So I've already started plotting out a place to raise up all of the grass. So the village isn't in quite as much of a flood zone and now i just need to go throughout the process of placing all of these blocks to fill in the entire area there we go it's all filled in now which looks really really boring without any tall grass on it we're in the ugly phase everybody time to move on before I add any further elements along the river's edge, I'd like to focus on the village itself by first constructing a bridge across the water here. For this, I'd like to stick to cobblestone, mossy cobble, and stone bricks. On top of that, a little bit of spruce out for the walkway. Ooh, we're almost out. Oh no, the head bonk did give me an idea though. Let's grab some prismarine for a little pop of color. First, starting off by building a platform of spruce slabs five wide arching over the river itself. For the first side over here, we can do stone bricks on the end. Maybe a little bit more coming through and slowly working this up to keep it kind of a smaller bridge i'm thinking it might be good to reinforce it underneath here with some stone bricks for the inner circle coming all the way back down into the water and then i should be able to just copy that over here adding a little bit more cobble here into the middle and extending it all the way up this is looking pretty good now for a little bit of prismarine where we can grab a few walls and a handful of slabs as if they're like a colorful railing going all the way across and then in the middle we do our walls maybe on top i can bring in these warp trap doors for a little extra pizzazz of course lamps underneath i do want to bring down all of the slabs so they're just a little bit closer to the water level with the style figured out for the first side i decided to duplicate that right over to the second with the bridge in place for now i'd like to add a little bit of coarse dirt here on the end and probably over on this side too i was listening to the spawn chunks podcast recently and joel duggan gave me a great idea for a little extra detail along the river if we dig underground here and create a bit of a staircase coming all the way up we can add in the water and you'll subtly hear the flowing water sounds now out of the left side of my ear i can hear water moving while we're walking across at least on this side we feel like the river's moving and i just think that's really cool playing with sounds in minecraft is something i really want to get into more so if you have any ideas for other blocks or ways that we can incorporate sounds into our world eh, let me know in the comments i'm removing the houses on the outside as i'd like to have the whole village on one side of the river and connecting the bridge up with the rest of the existing pathway the entrance to the village is looking great right now but the village um not so much and we're gonna keep ignoring that for now i swear we're transforming a village today i just have a million and one things that i want to do first like along the riverbank here, I want to tear out a lot of the space and bring in some mud, muddy roots, and a little bit of coarse dirt along the back edge, which for now, we're just going to leave along the base water's edge. Water edge along the first side is looking really good. Ooh, made it. Especially compared to the other side, which we're going to be fixing right now. Underwater, adding in a few mangrove roots to make it look like sticks are kind of building up, which I do need to waterlog. I also got some kelp that'll grow and just add a little bit more movement under the water. Small drip leaf is super rare, so I'm thinking along the edge, we just add it kind kind of in these flatter areas near the bridge. So we really see them. Yeah, that should be good. Of course, a little sugar cane along the edge, some oak leaves towards the back, a few dark oak saplings, then we can hide a little bit of wheat down here just to have things growing. A few sweet berries and a tiny bit of bamboo to act as another form of sugar cane. I don't want to go too heavily detailed here as I don't plan to do the entire riverbank, but I think this will work so far. A little more love added in and the village entrance is really turning into something special. Okay, maybe just a 
little tall grass. Just a little. I'll stop detailing to just a little tall grass. See? See? Very needed. Very, very much needed. Now I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I made flower farms to build massive tulip fields, but that's not the field. You know? You know, the field. So I got to play to field. Today, I think we grab potatoes. 29 episodes in and 3,050 days survived in hardcore Minecraft so far and no sign of stopping. If you're enjoying the series, double check that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future uploads. Less than 40% of the people watching right now are actually subscribed, so this very well could be you. With the brand new potato field, we are slowly approaching world spawn with the never ending expanse of fields. Ugh, what am I gonna do with that? Oh well, moving on. My original plan was to create a wall around the entire village to keep the villagers safe inside. Eventually, they're gonna roam free, but for now, they like their box. We're scrapping that plan, though. This is a peaceful village, after all, so I don't think they need a wall. But I do want something at the front here, so I've gotta get rid of this house. This is to make space for a tower right here, and since we have the river, I thought a cool water mill around here would be great. Earlier, I discovered I was out of spruce wood, so we're stopping by the mega taiga to chop down a few big old trees that right here should be plenty i'd like to have the water mill coming out somewhere right about here sticking into the water going from a little bit of dripstone up to some bricks stone brick on the corner and then we can top this off here with a little bit of granite make it appear a bit stronger along the water i'm thinking we bring in a little bit of the stone brick here and stairs on top bringing up the other two sides on the top here i think we can just do some spruce planks for a floor and so some we can be on top looking out over the river we can do some prismarine walls around the edge here in the center is where the water wheel of strip logs is going to be sticking out all the way into the water from here we can branch off all the different sides to create two different water wheels themselves sticking out for the wheel itself i took inspiration from my windmill designs to give it a little extra texture i am a bit worried about all of the job blocks inside of here but maybe our villagers just really love the water wheel for the next step i would like to bring a bunch of tuff around to create the actual milling section for for our water mill. Next, just bring in cobblestone up another three blocks. You know what? Instead here, I want to bring a little bit of stone brick out and create some archways. This will just give us a little bit of depth. With a little bit of moss, we can repeat it to the far side. And then over here, I want to create a deck that overlooks the front bridge, the waterway, and everything just to have more viewing platforms throughout this. Adding a mangrove door in here for a little bit of a pop. Then I'm thinking around that, we just bring in some sandstone with maybe a window right there like that. I'm adding in some slabs and trapdoors for a little roof. So this isn't so flat. I think I can get away with bringing this out another block. Strip spruce logs on the corners. In the middle, I want to start with some birch logs and then reintroduce that smooth sandstone we've been using as a way to start arching myself up to the top. Where I'll stop somewhere here, but maybe we extend it out to make the build feel a little bit different. Now for the big open section, because I can't be stopped, I'm adding a bay window because I love them. It's just so good. Just like the rest of the build, I got to work on next adding in all of the raining walls and faces. I love the idea of this upper window so that they can kind of have working time based on how much sunlight is coming in and it's a uh, setting. Over here, I've started a little overhang on where the main road's gonna come in and I figured we could have a few plants right back in here. And for this, I want to add the bell tower on this side, but I've got an idea for this. Come inside the sheep farm, I wanna grab a little bit of orange wool and pink wool to kind of represent the tulips. Four of these and six of these. Spending a quick night inside of my wagon and we're off for another day of building i feel like this is gonna look like sherbert but i'm kind of okay with that i am hanging off the lantern you know what i think that's pretty cool here i can bring some stone brick coming up right next to that guy some tough for a foundation maybe an entrance right there then we just keep the stone bricks coming all the way up Walls of the tower are in place, and I want to have a window here on the front, but around the edges, I was thinking we could bring out a little bit on the base. Got a little stair over here. Then we follow it up with a few of our cobbled deep slate. I'm not going to add any on this side, as I kind of want to bring the terrain up a bit. Above this, though, for a trim, I thought it could be cool to just bring in a bit more of our prismarine going around. Adding in a touch more prismarine here on the front, we can bring up some fences, and then I'm thinking dark prismarine could be the way to go in here. If I could place it. And please, yes. You know what? I like it. Moving on with that up here to the top, maybe we can take an idea from it. Bring in some of our chiseled stone stairs in the middle as like murder holes. But we're not about murdering here. It's just for decoration. Remember, no walls needed. But as a pretty trim on top, we can add a little bit more dark prismarine. 
For the middle, we can bring in a little bit more cobblestone to bring us up to a layer. And then probably just some spruce in here. Extending these up so we can actually have a small bell tower itself which eventually will sit right here in the middle. Fence gates along the bottom, and then a little double slab action. Adding a top here out of copper with a little bit of prismarine and then warp fences on top. The bell is now in place. But it's time for a little bit of whip redstone action, and I need a few more bells. Oh! I have a lot. From here, I'm going to need a redstone comparator, a ton more torches to craft a load of repeaters. Finally, a few pieces of glass to craft a daylight sensor. Now, right here should get access to the sun. So we can put the daylight sensor right there, flip it to night mode, comparator going in the side, bringing a line of dust down underneath. I'm going to need a small space to work down here, and we can just add in a bunch of repeaters set to max ticks with a bell at the end. Repeater that down here, do another bell, and finally the third bell right here. Now, if I did this correctly, when that sun sets, we should hear the bell toll three times. Any minute now, sun is going down. Whip redstone at its finest. It's going to work. Please work. Oh, oh my gosh, it worked. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Maybe a little more delay on the second one, though. That makes me absolutely so happy. Now for the part that I've been putting off, the roof. To create a unique village, I want to use warped wood, dark prismarine, and prismarine bricks. Please for once tell me I have some warped wood. Yes. Oh, we do. Prismarine brick. Yes. Little dark prismarine. The shulker monster giveth today. It is a great day. Working from the darker colors at the bottom to the bricks at the top, this is really coming together. And you might have noticed this little market stall where I'd like to bring in some smooth quartz slabs for an awning with one little workstation in here. So we actually have a villager hanging out. I think it'll be pretty cool. Now I desperately need a road as well. I've kind of been tearing theirs up for this. I'd like to use some packed mud, packed mud brick and coarse dirt. As always, we start with the burr. Oh, that's my redstone. And just like that, we now have the start of a road. This area being so flat is really bothering me and uh, I'm not a fan. So to start out, I'm extending a line of grass across to create a new slope. Yep, something like that should work. And I need one more going the other direction. It's probably going to fill up this entire area in here. With the guidelines in, I want to speed things up here as it's been a lot of block placing today. So here's me placing more blocks really, really quickly using all of the dirt that I dug up out of the river. Is it weird or just a coincidence that this isn't the first time I've just buried a village in this world? Huh. I don't know. But what I do know is my elytra is very toast. So I've got to go fix it. Barely able to make it to the wither skeleton farm. I stopped to get some experience to repair the elytra and more bones to power the flower farms. Elytra is repaired and tons of bone meal here is ready to go with a few extra skulls. It's finally time to plant the massive tulip fields around the village. The so first step, music, block sounds off. Next step, bone meal. First up, I'd like to gather up a ton of pink tulips. Unfortunately, these farms don't automatically gather them, but I can just run around here for a little well and keep on collecting oh 42 stacks nice about two minutes later and look at that a full shulker of pink tulips okay i'm i'm ready to stop it now my plan is to surround the village with massive tulip fields dividing it up so we have a different color on each quarter around the flower farms i want pink tulips but before we do that i think it could look nice to add in a few leaves to divide them up into smaller field sections Plotting out the remaining fields with more oak leaves. And now, so it's not just a massive blob of color of flowers all over the place, I want to create individual rows about two or three flowers thick and going across at an angle. Test field is done, and that's looking pretty good. So with that, I got to work completing the remaining pink tulip fields, which are looking pretty spectacular. Next, I'm here at the white tulip farm to try and gather up as many of these as I can. Full shulker box and some change later. We can leave the seeds in here. I thought the white tulips could look really cool going against the mountainside for all of the birch forest and everything like that. So villagers, I need you all to go into the village. I'm sorry I took down your little barricade, but uh, over there is safe, I promise. There's there's a bell, there's barrels. They're going to have to figure it out later. To prepare for fields, I smoothed out the terrain a touch so the slopes weren't so crazy and, well, Minecrafty. Next up, I want to build hedges to outline the fields again, trying to leave additional space for some farmhouses down the road, which I'm actually also leaving space for. 
the hedges are in place to surround the fields but before adding in any of the flowers i want to get a road in here this right here is so much better finally it's time to add in all of the white tulips throughout every single one of these fields two types of tulips are placed down and nearly two full shulker boxes have been used next up is the red tulip field but that's supposed to go on the far side of the river meaning it's time to build another bridge to reach the other side and continue the farmland expansion the same slope works on the previous bridge so we can just rebuild that same one bridge is now in place and i've started extending some roads out of it too connecting back into the village as well over here into the red tulip fields where first we're gonna focus on these extending the course dirt road up the hill to keep a path between the fields to leave it open for future expansion as the world progresses the more roads i have leading off into the middle of nowhere means the more stories i can tell down the way step one means just uh, surviving that long and next now, I need more oak leaves because we went through almost a whole shulker. In the pursuit of oak leaves, I cleared out part of the forest at spawn to refill my shulker box. And this right here should do the trick. You've already seen this twice already, so I got busy placing in the field hedge borders for the red tulips, leaving some space in between them so we can add details later. Then coming in with a ton of red tulips to fill in all of the remaining spaces. Just like that, over 20 stacks of tulips have been placed down. This leaves only one type of field left to plant the orange tulip which looking at our future village location needs to be over here and because i hate myself i didn't really leave any space for it however this pond thing out here i think i can just fill it in this will give us the land that we need yep just need to fill all of this in with even more dirt all right let's get busy This should work for a little river's edge here at the front, and then we just take this back. I know you want to see more dirt placing today, so I'm not holding back on you here with so much dirt and even some grass blocks being added in. And just like that, dirt has now passed sand as the most placed block in this world. I'm pretty sure oak leaves will be up there soon at this rate as we've got more out more hedges oh the villagers not no 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 the villagers right there please you all come right into the village all right this is not cool let's take out a <laughs> oh, no. i don't want to raid i don't want to raid i don't want to raid at all i'm trying to keep the villagers alive i haven't even built them homes i buried them all right there we go okay everybody alive we're in the hot tub everybody's in the hot where'd the stonemason go we lost the stonemason i'm sorry my friend you shall be remembered stonemason of the village number three completely unrelated to that look at all this bone meal i have right into the flower farm with you Suddenly, a full shulker of orange tulips. And my ears don't hurt at all. One more time, going through the process of placing in all of the tulips around the brand new fields. And here we have the final tulip fields being placed in. This is looking really good. Finally, we now have a place for each of the four types of tulips in our brand new village. I just have a few unwanted guests as well. The farmland is looking great, but there is more to add, like little trees dotted around. For this, I'm going to need a ton of oak fences and some azalea leaves. Taking a few of the open spaces around the field, we can bring ourselves up quite a few different blocks and create some posts like this. Trying to create some sort of like a cypress tree is my goal, and something like that should do. With the First one done, I decided to jump around to the different farmland regions to plant a few more of these trees. I don't want this to feel like a forest, but it just felt so bare without a few trees. Except I have run out of azalea leaves. So taking a little dirt, bone meal, and azalea bushes, I just need to grow a few trees. Now we just get to gather all of the leaves on top. And this should be plenty of leaves. Let's finish off these trees. This is much, much better. But you know what every giant field of flowers needs? Bees! Taking some leftover flowers. A long time ago, I built this mini greenhouse that should be full of bees. Hopefully that means I can take all of the flowers and we can breed up a few more baby bees. We're gonna need a few more than four. The entire next day went by and I've got a lot of bees in here now. I just need to figure out which one actually, you know, has bees in it. Ooh, it's gonna be a problem. Oh, it's a wandering trader. What's up, buddy? Red tulips. Yeah, I definitely, definitely need to buy those from you. Thanks. Thanks for that. I'm thinking 
thinking the perfect spot for a little ape area is right over here. This is for the cosmetics, and I just want the bees to be able to fly around the field and have a home that they can come back to. This should be enough space for the bees. And I'm thinking we use some scaffolding. Beehive on top with a bee. I hear a bee. That's good. That's a good start. Oh, we have bees. Look at them. Wait, come here. You too. Baby bee. Baby bee. Six beehives are down, and the bees are already enjoying the field. So I'm thinking right back here, we just make a little shack for some workers. Just a little spot like that. Except maybe some trapdoors on top. And maybe we add a few lilacs right back in here just for the extra pop of color. This leaves us with a pretty good spot for the bees, and they'll just be hanging out there. But I've got a few that I need to return back home for any future bee breeding tasks that we need to do. Creating the atmosphere around the village, I want to revisit the riverbank. So I'm running around replacing a lot of the large lower areas with coarse dirt and mud and muddy roots along the river's edge. With that in place, I'm adding in all of the extra details to the riverbank that I already went over previously inside of the video. Just looking at the before, and now check this out. The riverbank is actually adding something now. I was running around spamming a little bone meal, and I did see all of this coal and copper down here that uh, I couldn't pass up. I'm at that point where I feel like I have so many blocks in front of me, and I can just keep building, 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 but a lot of the essentials, I'm running out of. And a little over a stack of coal, or and a good amount of copper. I really love the fields of flowers, but they aren't edible. At least I wouldn't recommend eating them. So I thought a fun addition here could be a shepherd living outside of the village. Something like this should work for the base shape of the house. Bringing a few pillars up on the corners. And this little jut out I made, I want to do purely out of oak. Stripping it all down. Going with my classic style for the rest, we're just going to bring in a little bit of cobblestone for the walls. Hooking out a few places for some windows so we can actually see outside. And I think I want a back door here so we can get back to where the sheepies will live. We're, we actually already have two on top of the hill. Oh, this is so good. I just need to create a big old flat area for them to live on. Now out behind the house, we do need a small space for a lean-to for the sheep to actually stay inside. That's going to require a touch more terraforming back here. A little coarse dirt in for the floor. And I think only two of the walls being made out of stone could be kind of cool. So we'll leave this open here as some fence and I'll fix that in a minute. We'll work on the roof and some finer details later. But for now, I want to get a fence throughout here so that the sheep can't just leave. This size should be pretty perfect for a bunch of sheep to hang out. Just maybe a few bushes to cover up a little bit of the fence. With the base shapes in, I throw on a quick roof with a spruce trim and some dark prismarine in the middle. And at the top of the mountain here, there are so many sheep. What is going on? Okay, come with me. We've picked up some cows and a black sheep along the way. They're gonna have plenty of wool, hopefully. Come on, everybody. Let's go slowly down the mountain together. Oh no. We lived. We made it down into the valley and I just need them to jump over this fence for me. Oh, they're professionals. Here's your reward for being on time and actually getting through. Thank you. Okay, the whole herd is inside and we have our safety cows here to watch over them and this is going to be fantastic. Now for the little build in here that we have for the lean-to, I need to get a roof over it. I think the more airy we make it, the better it's gonna look in the end. So adding in a few fence gates right here, a few slabs along the front, full blocks, and then if we do slab with an S coming all the way down, this will actually work out. And there we have it. The lean-to is ready to go for the sheepies to sleep inside. The extra bits added around with a little bit of glow lichen and glow berries. This is looking pretty good for the shepherd's house. Now to get the shepherd themselves, where we can take a little string and craft ourselves a loom and fix the trapdoors I definitely didn't miss. But now I need one of you villagers to come on up here. Anyone want to be a shepherd? You look like you want to be a... No? Out of the hot tub. Don't park in the hot tub. Get out of the hot tub. Look at the loom. Look how great it is. I don't know where you're going, but get in the boat. I think the easiest way to get them over there is just going to be to take the river and hopefully he doesn't bunk his head on the bridge. It'll be okay, right? Yeah, we're fine. All right, Mr. Villager, I need you to follow the loom. Nope, that's the wrong way. Wrong way. Follow the loom. Yeah, you like the loom. Come on. Again with the wrong way. Oh, it's working. Now just get inside over the fence. Our shepherd's now home. I want the shepherd to be able to walk inside the house and not out the front door. So we're going to put the trap door right there. There, there's your loom. Look how great your loom is. With all the sheep out here, I can shear a few of them or one of them because he gave three wool and craft a lovely bed for our shepherd. He's got his workstation. He's got his bed and what trades? Ooh, white wool. What a smart shepherd. Buying the color of wool that is right in front of him. Thanks, buddy. The pale sunset vibes of these banners are pretty great, but I think we can do something a little bit better. Excuse me, get out of the field, please. You're gonna smash all my potatoes. I'm not ready to make a stew, but here we do have purple wool to make purple banners. On top of this, I need a little light blue dye, red dye, orange dye, and a magenta dye. Where you'd think after 3,000 days, I would have a loom somewhere in my house. No? The neighboring house? 
Loom. Yes. Taking a purple banner, starting with the red, adding in a chevron. Magenta to add a losange. Next with the magenta, we can add in a diamond in the center. Orange to add a gradient from the bottom for sunset vibes. And finally, light blue for a little bit of a border. To me, this village is going to be a combination of sunset vibes with the colors of all of the tulips that we have, as well as like light blues and colorfuls and just bright, cheery, happy, but kind of mystical is the vibe I'm going for here. And this I think is going to be perfect. Just need that back for a minute though, so we can do this and whoop, look at that. Okay, so first I'm going to transform our village, but I need to tear down the village, then get distracted by a few other things. We still build the village, right, Flip? We definitely still build the village, right, Flip? 